Okay, we're going to start that one again. We're going to start that one again. Apologies, my friends. Apologies. I incorrectly pressed the flipping stop button again on my OBS. That was my fault. Nothing wrong with the computer. I double pressed start and stop stream. I double pressed start and stop stream. I do apologize for those of you who are tuned into the other stream. I double pressed start and stop stream. But everything should be fine now. Apologies for the delay. Apologies for stopping and starting. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a flipping idiot. I double pressed it because these big hands sometimes get a bit excited and I sometimes press stuff twice. You know me? So apologies. Apologies. Apologies for that one. Apologies. But big up everybody in the stream chat. I appreciate every one of you tuning in. Thank you for hanging out with me. Always a pleasure, never a fucking chore. So thank you for tuning in. My friends, my family, my compadre, thank you for being here. Always a fucking pleasure. Always a fucking pleasure. Big up Coilo, I see you. What's going on? Big up David Guerrero. You got Chris Mack. Thank you for joining, my friends. In case you're wondering what I'm sipping on, I've got some nice coffee here I'm sipping on. Late at night, I know. Don't come at me. Don't give me a fucking, you know, lecture and shit. I don't fucking care. I drink this shit all day, every day. It is what it is. Um, let me have my vices, if you don't mind. I don't have many, you know, yeah I do, but yeah, you know what I mean, so let me have my fucking vices. So today we've got a nice fun stream ahead, loads of fun, cool stuff to check out, a few, a few bits that are new-ish to check out also, but you know, just a regular nice fun stream to fucking have a good laugh at, so I'm sure a lot of you will be enjoying this one, and you'll have a blast checking out some of the things that we're going to be checking out, of course, yeah, cool, great, amazing, brilliant! So, first things first, we're going to do one that I want to do off the bat because this one is a funny bit of information, a funny bit of lore that has just, that has just become um, evident in the last couple of days. So, this is going to be a good one to kind of check out and kind of, you know, laugh at because Jesus Christ, what an absolute shit service situation. So, I'm sure most of you don't know or don't care about this, but regardless, we're going to do it anyway because why not? It's fucking fun. So let me get this up for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So, as most of you guys know, I love to cover the old Yuri. Yuri is a former host and former employee of No Jumper, who's now gone on to do his own thing. He works in collaboration with um, these guys called Reconnected, who've got their own show um, in Blasey and Housephone, who are former No Jumper um, guests and hosts and shit. And now he does his own thing on his own streams where he, under the title Harmonious Man. Well... Yuri has been on a bit of a tear on kick. He was doing pretty well on there, I'm not going to lie. Um, so well that he ended up becoming a partner of kick. And on kick, there's a partnership program that allows you to essentially get paid an hourly wage for streaming. But they have a stipulation where they don't allow people to do the sleep stream. So I guess people were probably, because all rules are probably a reaction to people taking the piss. I bet you they probably introduced the whole hourly rate on streaming or kick thing then some fucking scammy streamers started doing those all day streams where they're sleeping for most of the day and they're still able to make money off of it so i'll probably kick or like you know what no we're not going to do that if you want to do the hourly money thing and have a secure wage you're going to have to be on camera literally streaming doing something you can't just be sleeping and get paid like you know for sleeping that's not how it works so i guess yuri for some reason didn't know that decided to do that because he's doing this sub subathon thing for the month and he decided to sleep while he was you know not meant to be sleeping and now he's in a position where he's got kicked off of the fucking kick program and i managed to find a clip where he speaks about it on his kick stream and we're gonna go through and hear him crying about it to um what's his face pot lord when he calls him and also kind of complaining about it aloud himself it's a pretty mad situation but it then gets worse when i play the next clip but let's this is the first clip where basically Yuri um, confesses to her pot lord that he's in a bad place right now. He's in a fucking bad place. Let me get it. Let me put a sound on. This is booty cheeks. Let me forward it a bit. Kick is out of pocket for sending you a pick of wild. Should be, around. Should, should be around here somewhere. It should be around here somewhere. But he comes out of the toilet and then he kind of talks about it. Let's see. Yo, yo, 
<laughs> okay, there we go. Should be right here. What the fuck? Yeah, as soon as you, as soon as I go to use the bathroom, you call me. I was like, what the fuck? with another Russian named Yuri, dude. That's fake. Yo, big up Joe from MIA. Hope you up, my friend. Big up Joe from MIA. Appreciate you. Wagwan, Wagwan. What's good, Sean? What's good, Nicky Mo? Smash that like button for me. What's good, Riley Read that. Smash the like button for me down below. Do me a favor. <laughs> He's so turned. Bro, he was like the latest dude ever. Like, he's like the latest dude ever. That's funny as hell. Wait, oh, it's... Oh my god, what the fuck? Of course. <laughs> That's funny as hell, bro. You gotta call me uh, call, uh, call me again when you see him. Yeah, yeah, I'm literally about to do it right and go back to the bar. But bro, look at this view right now. Hold on. Damn. That looks crazy. You're all the way at the top. This is a bit of a waste conversation, but it's going to get better when he ex describes why he got kicked off a kick. I guarantee you. Just bear with me. Oh, my God. Expert soulmate. Double back diamond. Double black diamond. Bro, that's the same. That looks so sick. Where is that again? Mammoth. Mammoth, bro. It should look so crazy. I don't know, dude. Um, we're trying to figure that out right now, dude. We just got uh, bad news. KCIP has kicked me from the program. So I don't know, because they said they said I was because uh, their like their one rule basically was like you can't you know get paid to do sleep streams. So I went out of my way to start separate streams and I would like turn off the monetization and they basically said that like oh. Uh, I'm uh, doing AFK streams, like, away from keyboard. And they sent me three screenshots of, like, the instances in which I did it. And one of them was when the screen, uh, stream F. One of them, Riley's there. And another one, Riley's there. So I'm like, I think it's like a mistake. It doesn't sound like a mistake to me. I've seen a lot of their streams and a lot of their streams when they're not arguing, when Yuri isn't walking around trying to instigate beef with fucking homeless people, when they're not aimlessly just sitting at a table on their phone staring at each other. The, the streams are number one quite boring and number two they're not doing much so i'm not surprised that kick were like you know what why are we paying this motherfucker to just walk around not do much not engage with his chat just sit there waiting for donos it's not fun and it's a weird thing because i would have thought i don't know maybe he's just not a really interesting or curious dude but surely if you do a stream all day maybe why not why shouldn't part of it be like you reacting to music you reading an article you talking about a life experience he just sits there watch watches the screen unless he's actually going and kind of antagonizing strangers he doesn't do anything so i don't really know if this is actually what irl streams are actually like or if he's just really boring i don't really know which one it is but i'm not surprised to hear him get kicked off the kick program because whenever i do quickly check in and drop in on their streams they're not the greatest and even them as a couple they're fucking boring bro as a couple they don't do much at all they're on the dinner table eating and shit and they're both on their phones they're not even talking to each other he's just talking at, he's just looking at the chat waiting for fucking donos to come through on a tts like it's pretty grim to kind of get through i'm not gonna lie it's kind of depressing really fucking is nah Oh, you do? Dude, thank you. That'll be sick. Yeah, of course, Yuri's the type of person who needs help, right? Who needs help, needs his hand held, needs an email of somebody to get in touch with. It's like, dude, you don't need an email. What you need to do is stop breaking the rules. What you need to do is to put on a fun stream, and then maybe you'll be fucking fine. You don't need fucking emails and introduce me to this person. Help, 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 help. Hand out, hand out, hand out. 
you need to actually you know fix up yourself and just i don't know maybe figure out a way that you don't need to rely on people's charity in order to kind of live day to day because this is kind of anxious way of living anyway it's so tenuous where literally kick can take away what your ability to kind of move around your ability to eat your ability to kind of stay in certain places like come on bro contact Jordi. i hit up ice and i want to see if ice can like help me talk to someone but yeah that'd be dope I know, so right now we're trying to figure out like what we're gonna do. Yeah, no, Koyla, you're right. Kick did peak during Fuzi. I'm still wanna I still wanna utilize Kick because it's so wild wild west because of the music side. I want I think I wanna start doing like album reviews, reactions on Kick specifically, because you can just watch stuff on there, right? You can just go crazy. Similar to my Patreon. My Patreon I've got a record of with Kick I can kinda of live stream it. But you can just watch stuff on a mad one. So I think that's one of the best things about Kick. That's a bit lawless. Obviously, you can't really do it, but the copyright people don't come after you hard on Kick as they do on other places. So you can kind of go a bit crazy. But day to day, you know, I think they're I think they're they've been plumped up a lot because of Stake, isn't it? Because Stake is the gambling company that basically owns Kick. So, you know, Kick is kind of like their front facing company for the youth and shit, live streaming. But I guess there's not a lot of like dependence put on kick to make money because steak makes them so much money i get that but there's so, i don't know it could it's still it, i think there's still potential to make kick fun but the people who are spearheading and pushing kick the biggest people are kind of shit you know they're not they're, they're not giving it a good image but i think if you harnessed it well you could make it work i think you could because it, it's like the fuzzy situation proved it kick can be quite fun because people can get up to you can go crazy on kick but obviously not as crazy as fuzzy by the way um where is fuzzy no i i told the chat like uh going forward now that the kcfp shit is gone like uh what was that Yuri is a Russian asset to create propaganda about marijuana consumption and its <laughs> yeah. negative effects. Oh my god, that's so fucking true. Big up Fyodor. Yo, Yuri and Yuri and Fyodor. So you no, not you, Fyodor. I take it back. Yuri and Chin are respectively two of the worst examples of proponents from their country. Like their worst examples. They're the worst image of males from their country, respectively in Korea, respectively in fucking Russia. They they embarrass. They are shame for their country. I swear to God. Yuri especially more so because I've never seen a Russian like this. Like your image of a Russian in your head is they're stalwart, stoic, you know, serious, dependable, mature, grown up, resourceful, get shit done types. And this guy is just like, like you said, maybe he is a psyop in terms of the negative effects of weed. Because if this is what weed does to you, God damn it, bro. He's just a shell of a person, just existing through life, going through the motions, not really doing much, barely keeping himself alive, just looking for the next eighth, the next eighth, the next eighth. Like he's legitimately, you know, he probably would never admit it because he's super hard headed. But he's legitimately addicted to weed. 100% he's addicted. Like, he probably can't go a week without smoking. No way. He probably casually drinks every single day anyway, right? Which, like the most of us, don't get me wrong. But still, has a free schedule to do whatever he wants and spends most of it just, like, on his phone, at home, streaming, not doing much. <sighs> but maybe that's part of his DNA. Maybe, uh, don't Russians drink a lot? Isn't that part of their culture too? They love, a, they love a good booze up. So maybe he is, you know, he is quite Russian coded in that regard. But fucking hell, he's such a loser in weird ways. I smoke like a chimney and can afford a minimum one shower a day. <laughs> Big up here, no, yeah, okay, cool, okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Smoking weed doesn't mean you don't shower. Exactly. That's a fucking good point. You see what he's doing, though? He's giving... Even you weed smokers, he's giving you guys a bit bad image. He's making stoners look bad because he's the quint he's the example that every parent has in their brain when they tell their kids not to smoke weed. Don't smoke none of that marijuana, none of that reefer, none of that ganja because they think you're going to end up like a Yuri. They have a Yuri person in their head. A loser, not many job prospects, lazy, entitled, whiny, 
You know, that's who they have in their brain when they think of stoners. This guy. Fuck, man. He gives, he gives Russian a bad image. Stoners a bad image. Skaters a bad image. Just a loo. You know what? My alarm bell started to ring about Yuri when you got fired from no jumper. That's when my alarm bells rang. You got fired from no jumper, not because of drama or because you had beef, but because you didn't do your job correctly. That's a problem because no jumper isn't fucking, you know, it's not NVIDIA, right? No jumper isn't like working at Tesla, right? <laughs> so if you can't keep your job at no jumper, you're probably a bit of an idiot. You're probably dumb. Especially back in that era, in that era where he was at, there wasn't as much internal beef as there is nowadays in drama. So there wasn't a lot of overlap. You could kind of keep behind the scenes and do your thing. The fact that he got, he got fired from No Jumper should have told you everything about you know Yuri. And this is also considering Adam Twenty Two isn't a great boss, isn't a great leader, is a bit of a cunt in himself. I think Adam was totally justified firing um, Yuri. Looking back now, I think Adam saw the writing on the wall. This guy's a fucking donut. You can't even write the titles properly. He's dumb. I was gonna, um, uh, I'm not gonna pause the timer. I'm gonna keep the timer going while I sleep. Yeah, but you, think, you don't think that would antagonize it more for the KCRT to, like, come back and shit? Nah, because, like, the K, like, because the, the whole rule is, like, you can do sleep streams. It just, you can't have it monetized. You know what I mean? Like, so, I can't even monetize shit right now. So, like, I'm not breaking any yeah. rules. Imagine getting kicked off of the Kick incentive program. Like, Kick is like a lawless place. Kick have got literal twelve-year-olds on stream, pick you know, r running past people eating outside and stealing their food and shit. He has people on stream kicking old ladies, stealing people's dogs, just doing mad shit on there. That guy Johnny Somali was on fucking kick for a while. I think he, I don't know if he got kicked off, he's still on there. Johnny Somali was going to all these different countries around the world and just terrorizing people. Ended up in a fucking Japanese prison. Imagine getting kicked off of that program on kick. Imagine what you're doing. Imagine how lazy you must be. Imagine how dumb you must be to be one of the people that gets kicked off kick. The most lawless, do what you want, no rules place. Wow. I know. Hopefully it'll get figured out though. And it's so annoying too because it's like uh, I've had I've been having so many um like verified accounts like join the streams, bro. Like Air Con, fucking Ice, and uh, Drew Sharing. I don't want to be petty, but I was going to tell him, like, yo, guys, like, uh, I'm just going to go back to YouTube if you're going to... Thank you, bro. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you, dude. But, no, right now we're just, we're packing up and getting ready. Big up Potlord though, good friend Potlord trying to help him, but there's no helping losers. Just do you, there's no helping losers. He's going to eventually fuck the situation up. Anyway, to make it worse, to make it worse, to make this situation worse, guess what also happened? He didn't only get kicked off the kick partner program. Yuri has now maxed out all his credit cards and he's now ran out of money, but he's still justifying buying weed every day. Look at the pose. Look how defensive he is, right? Look at the pose of how he's talking when he starts talking. Look how defensive he is. Arms crossed, trying to defend himself. Because that's the thing about Yuri's streams. I love watching them. I, like my streams, right? As good as you guys, you know, say that I am at streaming and you enjoy my you enjoy my streams and stuff. I think the chat is as funny, if not funnier than me, right? When it comes to stuff that you say and stuff. Yuri's stream chat is really hilarious. They really call him out on his bullshit. Like, watch, watch Yuri's streams just for the stream chat. I swear to God. They're always sending really funny TTSs, calling him out on his bullshit, telling him to grow up. And you see him kind of freaking out, having tantrums and banning people if they kind of, you know, um, contradict something he says and shit. So the, the chat have been calling him out 
for messing out his credit cards and still buying weed and then still asking for money from the chat, right? So they obviously pissed off. So listen to Yuri's justification for why it's okay to still buy joints, even though, or to still buy weed, even though he's maxed out all his credit cards. Even though he's been, I don't know, from the subs he has, he should be, what, taking in about seven grand or maybe a little bit underneath that. Maybe he's not getting it because it's obviously monthly, but he's probably still getting good enough donations to kind of carry on. But he's now going to justify... Oh, someone come through. Big up. Yuri needs weed for his girlfriend's welfare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably. 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 That makes a lot of sense. Big up, Fyodor. He's going to now justify on this video. Watch now. He's going to justify why it's okay to buy weed, but then to skimp and scrape on the food, accommodation, all that good stuff. Just listen to this. Listen to this rationalization. It's fucking insane. Did not buy a bottle. We already had this bottle, and then also to all the people saying, "Oh my God, you're broken buying weed. You're broken buying this, guys." Yes, I guess you can call it broke, but we're not broke, bro. It's I said we're not, we can't continue with the voyage. This voyage of getting Airbnbs and gas and the traveling—that's what I was saying. Is like I was like, it's over with, and like now that my card is like what the voyage of getting Airbnbs and gas. So you mean? The stuff that you need to travel places, the bare necessities. You need gas to drive your car to the places you're going. You need your car. You need the Airbnb so that you have a warm place to stay and a roof over your head and a bed to sleep on and somewhere to shower. So the bare necessities you have to cut back on, but then you can buy weed. As much as I don't like Yuri and I think he's a loser, I have to be honest. I think Riley enables this because usually in, in the relationships that I've been in, the girls that I've been involved in, sometimes as a guy, you can be quite lazy and go through the motions, but sometimes your partner's anxiety about money, about security, about the future, about their safety can maybe sometimes force you into action, you know? Like your per your partner's worried about the holiday coming up, you don't have enough money. That might make you go and get another job to have some money to spend or whatever. That might make you put in some extra hours. But because they're both kind of comatose and almost in some Xanax high thing where they're just not really barely alive or cogn cognizant, whatever, I think they're both enabling each other. I swear to God, because this is insane. How does his girlfriend be okay? with traveling like this like imagine traveling and not knowing if you can afford to stay in an airbnb or if you could have to stay in a hotel or if you have to go to a hostel not even have your accommodation sorted like that anxiety of just like just figuring out on the go but then you're not you're not it's not figuring out on the go like a spontaneous trip it's figuring out on the go because you don't have the money to to, to you know to buy something or sorry to to book something ahead of time you're hoping that if you stream that someone's going to send you something like what the fuck I could never get away with this with any of the girls I've ever dated in my entire fucking life. Ever. This would never run. Number one, I don't like doing this anyway. I don't like going somewhere and not having my things sorted out. My accommodation, my spending money that I spec'd out for however long I'm going to go, weekend, week, whatever. And then if I get in a situation where I need more money, of course I've got some, some left over. But it's not as if like I'm going there hoping, okay, cool. Let's hope I get sent this so I can do that. It's like, yo, how do people do this? How do people live like this? This is this is this is like f layered thick with anxiety unnecessarily. Wow. I don't know. I don't get this. I really don't get this guy. I don't. I don't understand how he's real. I don't understand how he's real. And now they've maxed out their credit cards, allegedly. Whatever the credit card limit is, they've maxed it out. And now they're what? Kind of begging for money? Kind of not? But now they're choosing to, to pull back on the Airbnb and the gas in order to pay for what? Weed. Can you imagine being that person? You pull back on spending money on gas for your car to travel the places you're going to and and airbnbs you're going to trade that in for hosts hostels so that you can then buy weed surely buying weed you'd want to buy it so you could smoke it in the airbnbs that's quite fun right as to what post to going to a hostel where you can't smoke it indoors you have to smoke it outside like a fucking loony 
Like, I can't imagine living this way. One more time. Yes, I guess you can call it broke, but we're not broke, bro. It's I said we're not, we can't continue with the voyage. This voyage of getting Airbnbs and gas and the traveling, that's what I was saying is like, I was like, it's over with. Voyage, and like, Rob, that word. Now that my card is like, at the, like they're saying no at this point, it's like, we, we won't be able to continue. The nervous switching and twitching and fidgeting is telling me another story. The super defensive stance at the beginning. They've definitely run out of money. And again, like you have to judge. You have to always judge a girl by her dating choices and also a guy by her dating choices. And as much as people like to say, that's the thing I hate about the internet. The pretty privileged thing is real. Because people think Riley's hot. They extend her too much graces. She's just as musty as this guy. If she lets this guy who doesn't shower for three days get on top of her, kiss her, be in her company, just imagine how musty she must be. Do you know what I mean? Just because she's pretty doesn't mean it doesn't take away from the mustiness. If anything, the mustiness actually helps to make her look way more unattractive because, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think she probably douches, you know? Let's just say that. I wouldn't think Riley is a doucher, you know? Probably the kind of person that just like, you know, dances in the fucking shower and ducks out after two seconds. Does Definitely doesn't wash behind her knees, for sure. Definitely doesn't wash behind her knees. So, yeah, I don't know, man. These, the most funkiest, weirdest couple in the world. They're probably going to figure out and land on their feet anyway. But the fact that they've maxed out their credit cards, the fact that Riley, Yuri managed to get kicked off of the partner program on one of the most liberal, no hold bars, crazy fucking platforms known to man kick a platform that everybody seems to hate nowadays because IRL streamers on there are like the bane of human existence they embarrass everybody that makes content online by going around the world and just causing havoc he manages to get kicked off that platform in terms of not kicked off the partner program sorry not kicked off the platform it goes to show you know these guys are just a waste of space they're absolute waste of space so let's see what happens to them but Yuri is in deep shit Yuri is in deep shit moving on we have another one a video a new one courtesy of the tfat case subreddit pick up the guys over there for uploading it it's called the shorb shutdown this is a classic this is a classic if you guys know anything about the shorb shutdown you would know while gone this is a fucking classic a fucking classic big up them for bringing this one back Dan, can somebody explain to me why wow, he's got a big bum here? Can somebody explain to me, you know, Brendan, face down, ass up. Can somebody explain to me, I bet if Eric Griffin saw that, he'd go fucking, he'd definitely get a boner. Can someone explain it to me, if Brian Callan saw that, he definitely might come in his pants. Can somebody explain to me why he agreed to take part in this metamorphosis grappling jujitsu thing in the first place anyway? Why did he decide to take part in it? If he wasn't going to engage, if he wasn't going to, he, did, he, he, he was probably worried he was going to get his legs, his fucking joints were going to get split in two or whatever for his fucking career. Why did he decide to take part in it? If he was worried about his UFC career, why did he take, why, why decide to take part in this, not engage? No, why decide to take part in it and then decide not to engage? If you're going to take part in it, surely you're going to engage because uh, what's the point of being there? Because looking back, this was a incredibly redacted thing to do. It made him look so fucking dumb. Okay, defensive grappling, I understand that's a strategy, but he wasn't trying to do anything apart from defend. Is that also a strategy? Surely defensive grappling is like, in a, it's in a way to maybe wear the person down, look for openings, wait for mistakes. Right, I'd imagine. Is that what, and again, I don't know if I'm right. So why why would you just be defending the entire thing and not waiting for any chance? Of, like, he didn't win that fight, did he? No one won. 
Was it a draw? I don't know how it ended. It's super weird. Oh, big up Assad. Obviously, Assad just eloquently put it there. Because he can say he rolled with a great and he couldn't tap him. Ah, that makes sense. There we go. There we go. You get the credit of, you know, actually fighting, quote unquote, at such a established, well-regarded, um, you know, thing like Metamorphosis. And then you also get the cachet of like, oh, I faced this guy. He didn't tap me. He didn't come close. I'd completely stuffed him. I completely shut him down, shut down his game. But what did you do, though? You just shut down his game. But what did you do? It's sort of like in football when people, when managers adopt the park the bus strategy. Parking the bus is cool, but you also have to attack. Real Madrid did that against Man City the other day. They didn't have much possession, not many shots on target, but they stuffed Man City's attacks, limited their attacks, scored, and also prevented them from scoring any more than the one goal that they did to take into penalties. So defensive strategies are good, but just defending for defending's sake without engaging is fucking... He's got the flattest ass, isn't it? Come on, Papa, man. He definitely won't do any squats, no air squats, no lunges, no nothing. He's got the flattest ass in the world. Wagwan. Where's the bum, man? Like, look, look how flat that S is. He's got that Taylor Swift back. The S isn't even rounded or bulging. If that was me, that shit would be like all spread. It would be all like wide and all loose. And you see all the ink, you know, spreading across like... <laughs> That S would look like an N <laughs> if I was wearing those pants. <clears throat> but yeah, man, he's got the flattest ass. Why go on for your bum, bro? Get that batty shaking, bro. Why go on? <laughs> he's just tapping his head. Pushing jiu -jitsu, I've never started out jujitsu where they sit to the butt. I've never learned that way. I'm unfamiliar with it. I've never learned jujitsu that way. But does he have a black belt? He's never learned jiu-jitsu that way but he has a black belt <laughs> big up coiler <laughs> i've never been engaging at all <laughs> it's so funny he's just refusing to engage i love how he's got the same mannerisms too by the way when he talks Want him to shoot, shoot, shoot. Like, he's exactly the same guy. Only thing different is that his lips aren't as plumped and he doesn't have the Tia Abuela eyebrows. They're definitely not there. But you can definitely see the, the makings of a, a redacted, annoying, insufferable, obnoxious Brendan were definitely there already. The, the ingredients. Now, now it makes sense why he was hated in the UFC. UFC fans always hated him. It makes sense now. They saw through it. They, they could see the dickhead. The us people, myself, including me, I can speak for myself anyway. I didn't see the dickhead in Brendan until much later on. I didn't see the, the, the piece of shit until much later. But I think the UFC fans, they called it from minute one. They're like, ah, this guy's a prick. They called it straight a fucking way. They let the crowd, that's usually unknowledgeable situation. Isn't that the opposite? Again, I've never been to these type of things, but I'd imagine a crowd that, any guy that would go to a grappling competition fight surely has some interest in grappling and jujitsu. Surely. It's surely a wrestling fan. Surely watches a bunch of wrestling, maybe wrestles themselves, maybe rolls. Like, I don't think this is like a, a casual sport for like casual, like, I don't know. Wouldn't that be the case? I think the majority of guys in that place could probably tap most regular people. Probably sub them, right? Why would they not be knowledgeable? That's a strange thing to say. The crowd is not knowledgeable. It's a grappling match. Who else watches grappling matches apart from fans of grappling? Huh. 
I, I was a uh, Brazilian national uh, uh, champion in wrestling without never seeing wrestling before. I didn't go there and sit back. I went there and gave my 100%. Mm. That's what, with those accolades, that's what you're going to wrestle, man. Hey, 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 hey. Brendan is such a dick. <laughs> So he's Brendan would much rather it's a, it's a strange complex to have in it. Brendan was more comfortable getting in the octagon and getting sparked by people, having those highlights of himself with his eyes rolling and his mouth open, than getting choked out by somebody. Is that really that embarrassing? I don't know about you guys. I've I've never been choked out. I also never been knocked out. But I'd imagine surely getting knocked out is way more like bruising to your ego. And harder to get over than getting choked. Depending how you get choked. Because surely if you're getting choked, then you tap, the person lets go. Do you know what I mean? It's still going to hurt in different places. But getting sparked, getting flatlined is completely different, no? Because it feels like he was trying to avoid being embarrassed. Like he was he was avoiding, he didn't want to have a, a highlight reel of him getting choked out. Or like his leg getting twisted, right? I, didn't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm bugging out here. But before he could get points like high school wrestling, exactly. Brennan's legit faking all of that. He has no clue what the hell he's doing. Care is so much worse. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. It'd be more embarrassed to run in front of all those people. <laughs> if you're going to an obscure BGJ tournament, you're probably as hardcore fan. Exactly, Ryan. If you're going, exactly, if you're going to an obscure BJJ event in the middle of because I, I don't know about i'd imagine these events are probably in the middle of nowhere or they're at some random time of the year they're really niche like you know these guys aren't huge celebrities unless you're in the in the community of it it's like going to a fucking weightlifting meet or something it's like bro you have to really give a fuck about weightlifting to see people going tch, tch, snatching and all that shit cleaning and jerking this is not like a casual sport it's not like watching fucking football on the weekend so to call the fans unknowledgeable or not knowledgeable is pretty insulting, to be honest. Especially when you fight like this. They probably know more than you. They probably put up a better fight than you, actually. <laughs> He's running and here's my question. In hindsight, for what? Look at that run away. Look at that. That was hilarious. I didn't see that bit. Look at this bit. That's the best bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Papa is fucking legend. Papa's a fucking legend. Look at Papa. He's pretty good going side to side. <laughs> and here's my question in hindsight for what? He's like, you're not choking. The me. game is over. Hmm. There's nothing we can do. There's no reason to bring it up. Was it worth it? I would say no. Oh, big up Papa, man. What a fucking legend. What an absolute legend. Like, completely ruining his reputation in MMA, always in shapes and sizes. We gotta fucking love it. We gotta fucking love it. I swear to God. I love it. Anyway, let's move on. Brendan the fucking shutdown Shorb. Brendan the fucking shutdown Shorb. Um, let's, oh yeah, let's play this clip. You guys remember this one? This is an oldie but a goodie. I've been going through some of the archives, right? Going, trawling through the Fire and the Kids sub for some old clips and shit. And I stumbled across this doozy. I stumbled across this absolute doozy. I'm sure some of you have seen it. It features the great Joy Koi. And it's an amazing clip because this was back when Brendan used to parrot all the things he heard from like Rogan, Joey Diaz, blah, blah, blah. So one of the things those guys used to say, I think Joey Diaz used to say it actually, Joey Diaz and Rogan had this stance about local radio where they were like, they'd much rather focus on their show instead of do local radio because I think at that point in their career, they already were quite successful. So they're like, oh, you probably know I'm here anyway. So I'd much rather focus on my show to give you the best show possible so you come back to my next one as opposed to waking up at 6 a.m. and doing a radio show that no one's going to listen to which makes sense. But I do remember also Joey Diaz and people saying that local radio and shit was really important to their come up when they were first becoming a comedian, right? And getting a name out there because those local shows, you never know who's listening. And sometimes you can end up getting fans for life because of that. Sometimes a person that works there could end up hooking up with something else, whatever, because it's all media entertainment shit. So actually when you're in a come up, it's actually a good tactic to actually be on it. Now, in this particular clip, Brendan decides to rabbit 
or parrot one of the lines he's heard from Rogan or Joey Diaz about not doing local radio and it's a waste of time. And then Joe Coy absolutely schools him and lets him know, no, like, I'm bigger than you. I sell out theatres and I still do fucking radio because it's, why not? It's fucking free promo. Why the fuck would I want and I do it? And Brennan obviously ends up kind of, you know, acquiescing and agreeing because I think this is also the point where Brennan was obsessed with tickets. So he kept getting Joy Coy on the show, even though he's not that funny. He sells a bunch of tickets, right? He's very popular within his community. The people that like watching the shit, I think he's kind of Filipino or something, but he's also just a funny guy, I guess. People like him. So Brennan was obsessed with like getting people on that. So tickets and trying to learn business and stuff, which is funny because never at one point in these conversations is he ever talking about jokes and how to be funnier it's always about business stuff like marketing promotion all this sort of nonsense but it's never about actually being funny which is or being funnier so let's listen to this clip and let's see joey coy call out sure for thinking he's too big for radio this is a fucking legendary one really really good actually let's check this out uh with my with my career is uh yeah i'm sold out but i'm still gonna do radio you're still going to do press. Oh, are you kidding me? Radio is king. To this day, it's still king. Interesting. Audio, is not, oh, to this, audio isn't king. Audio isn't king. Radio is king. Big up Joy Coy. Big up Joe Coy. Actually, he's coming to the UK soon, isn't he? Should I go and watch him? I think Joe Coy is coming to the UK soon. I'm pretty sure I saw I saw something. He's, on, he's in the UK. Maybe I'll go and watch him. Maybe I'll actually go this time. 3rd of May. Oh, am I even here? Damn. Oh, okay. Maybe I have to go third of May. I think that's is that is that next week? Oh no, it's the following week. I think following week. I might have to go. Forty-seven quid. Oof. Well, he's not. You know, it's not sold out. Sold out. So you know, not the best brains of the business. Let's let's do one ticket. Let's see how much they're going for. Forty-seven. Are all these available then? All these are available. Where's the stage over there? So he sold out quite a bit, to be fair. I don't know if this all. This is this is pretty good for Joe Coy, isn't it? To be fair, because the O2 Arena is not. That's not a small venue, isn't it? What's the O2 capacity? O2 capacity. What is it? Twenty thousand. God damn, Joe Coy. He sold out all of these in grey. The only ones available are the blue ones. The middle section here in front of the stage is completely gone. Only these on the sides are, are available. It's 58 there, 58 there, 47 towards the back. Okay, I'll probably do one of these ones, right? These 58s. That's probably the best ones to get. Wow, bro. He sold a bunch of tickets. That is pretty good, bro. That's a horrible seat in it. Sit right there. Two seats in. Those seats there, all the other ones are taken. Fuck. Okay, I'm going to have to take a look at this, actually. Joyco is actually performing in London. That actually might be something I might have to check out. I'm not going to lie. This is actually looking like a good little moment. I'm not going to lie. Let me actually save that on my thing so I've got it. Um, This one, right? He's performing in London, actually. Um, Events. What is it? Is it song kick? What do I need it for? I need song kick. There we go, song kick. Because I use use song kick as my use. Oh, it's not. I'm not even signed in. Okay, cool. Fuck it. I'll do it another time. But anyway, Joyco is coming to London very soon. Cannot wait. I'm definitely gonna go check it out. I'm definitely gonna go check it out. Let's continue to the video. Day, because it just is. Like there's still that. You know, the okay, I'm just gonna buy tickets and not go. I know. I'll probably. <laughs> no, no. I'm definitely gonna go. I'm definitely gonna go. I'm definitely gonna go. Third of May is not too far. That's literally two weeks time. I want to go and make a review. I actually, I need to go to, I need to do like Joke World. I need to do like in review, in situ stuff. Joke World goes to, uh, here I am at the Mothership. Here I am at Dave Chappelle's comedy club. I need to be like in there. Do you know what I mean? I have to be in there. In there. I don't know who said that. I don't know. But anyway, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. Because I would argue there's podcast a reason, is king. Huh? I, I, well, 100% podcast is king. Who said podcast is king? That was when the bubble was super big in it the bubble was huge and these guys saw no end to the money they were making podcast is king you know podcast is king <laughs> what <laughs> but you gotta you still gotta face the fact that there's two three million people listening to la radio right now in the morning at least at least, uh, at least. so why aren't you talking to them that's live man like you that look at brendan being stumped 
you could tell he doesn't think about the things he says. He just rabbits what other people say. Because you could throw back to Joe as much Joe Joe as much as he's right about what he's saying. I guess it depends on how you value your time. I think if you're an established comedian, maybe going on morning radio, all of the morning radio is probably not a good idea. You're probably better off just like, you know, promoting your show on the biggest podcast in that local area. I know Rory and Moore did it. Rory and Moore did it pretty well. When Rory and Moore came to London or came to the UK, they did tons of podcasts in the local areas they were in. Yo, big up. Appreciate you. My cat Steve's B-Day is Tom Aro. He's turning seven. <laughs> big up, bro. Happy birthday to your cat, my friend. If you've got a cat, hopefully it's a homeless cat. Happy birthday to your cat. Um, let's get fucking, let's get party emojis in the chat for your fucking cat. So big up your fucking cat. Party emojis in the chat for your fucking cat, my friend, bro. Happy fucking birthday to your lovely feline friend. Let's get those party emojis in the chat for this person's cat. Um, yeah, I guess if you're Joy Coy, I think if you're an established, if you're an established, 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 established comedian, going on all of the fucking podcasts probably isn't a good idea. Uh, maybe just or sorry, all of the morning radio shows. Maybe do the podcast instead. Rory and Moore did that really well when they came to the UK. They went to, I think they toured around the UK, maybe some places up north. And I remember them doing a bunch of podcasts local. So obviously to drive traffic and to get people to buy more tickets and get them familiar with the local environment. And obviously it also worked as a good way for them to kind of figure out what podcast they wanted to open for them because they had openers. So they have podcasts come in and do their little things. And that would obviously bring a lot of locals out as well. So I think that's obviously smart. What Joe Coy is saying is really smart too, because that's just like whatever opportunity you have to promote your shit, do it. So thinking you're bigger than radio is stupid because, you know, there's, especially in America, I think radio in America must be really king because you guys drive everywhere and everybody drives, right? You guys drive everywhere and everyone drives. So you're spending a lot of time in your fucking cars. So to just completely ignore radio is quite dumb. So big up Joe for schooling Brendan here. That's your chance. That's your chance. So, so when you do, when why wouldn't you go on there and talk about your podcast? That's you. That's you assuming that everybody in los angeles knows about this show that's 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 a that's a brave assumption that's but i think he does feel that way this is also see joe is forgetting who he's speaking to look at brennan's face already he's kind of scrunching up his face you know he's receptive but not really receptive joe is forgetting that this is brendan in that era when do you remember brendan in the era when he used to always say oh i went to starbucks and the barista recognized me and asked me about the fights he was acting as if like he was walking around LA like he was fucking Tom Cruise. Like everyone was asking him questions about the UFC, about fight cards, about this drama, that drama. So I do think there was a time where Brendan honestly did think he was the biggest podcast in LA. It was probably him and Rogan. He probably thought him and Rogan were number two, one and two in terms of top two podcasts in the world or in LA for sure. So that's probably why he doesn't want to go on radio. It's like they all know who I am. It's like, bro, nobody knows who you are. You want to win it's a more. Dumb assumption. It is. Yeah. It's bad. But it's you're not ego. dumb. No. You're not. But you got to understand, there's a reason why Big Boy is still fucking badass out here. There's a reason why Jay Cruz has a show. That's why the Woody show is syndicated. That's why Bob and Tom have, like, those markets. And Big up, big up, big up. How could Brandon do radio? I can barely understand him without captions. <laughs> oh, that's amazingly true, Fiat. Oh my God. Can you imagine Marble Mouth Brendan at 7 a.m. in the morning? You already see how fucked up he is when he does Shorb Show. Can you imagine Marble Mouth Brendan at 7 a.m. in the morning? Whew. Town about radio. B. <laughs> Howard is still funnier than both these MFs, even as an old man, <laughs> exactly. let alone back in the day. It's like Tom about. I love Tom about. Tom about. <laughs> I love Tom. Whenever, whenever I hear Tom Bout, my mouth immediately goes, my mouth widens, Tom Bout. My mouth almost widens, Tom Bout, Tom Bout. But yeah, big up, big up, NJ Ranger. <laughs> Tom Bout. And those 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 shows and those platforms so, exist so, for a reason. So when you go into a city, like I'm in Nashville next week, when when I go to Nashville, that's when do press up and I always go, Who is it? What do they want me to do? Bro, you should you play every I will play soccer. Imagine back I'd love to hear the difference of Brendan back then to now from agents. Imagine the hell he was giving agents. 
acting like a diva. Who are they? What they want to talk to me about? This is also back in the day when he didn't like, he didn't accept interview requests from quote unquote smaller podcasts. Now he's going on podcasts with like barely 500 fucking views and sitting down with people. Back in the day, he used to act like, yeah, I'm not going to go on your podcast. It's too small. Like, imagine. Look at the change. God damn. How the mighty have fallen. Mom channel. I will go to uh, the pop radio. I will do anything. I'll go to a talk show. I don't give a shit. Like, talk to them. Do, do me. They love you if you did yeah. that. That's a great relationship. You know what's funny? He's saying that. It's true because wasn't that part of um, Tom Segura's law? Tom Segura's fame building was was because he would use, he'd go to these random local TV shows and play one of his characters that he does on the show, Your Mom's House. Well, it used to be funny. So that kind of like fucking around on those type of shows made him into a bit of a legend online. Even Bobby Lee. Remember Bobby Lee? He'd go on those random TV shows, hugging up the women, you know, playing up the fucking, you know, innocent, creepy type of dude persona thing. Mark Norman, the same thing, going on there and ribbing and just, you know, razzing the fucking host. That sort of stuff that in the moment probably feels like a waste of time. When that stuff lands on YouTube, it then becomes a whole other thing. Brendan should know that, right? After you carp the clips and you upload them and share them, you get like millions of views and shit, right? <laughs> to have. Interesting. Like, how Interesting. cool is it to go into a place and go, I'm sold out. I'm just here to say hi. Like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. And they love you and they appreciate you for that. And you I had three shows at the wind that were sold out six months in advance. I, I, my shows were in June. They were sold out in January. I still did a full media run in Vegas as if the show only had two tickets sold. To, to, and then you push everything. I did every news outlet, media, radio, everything. In Vegas, I'm listening. And, I, and I did not have to be there. I'm listening. Man. Yeah, I'll do that from now on. Yeah, yeah man. And you sell, you sell more tickets than anybody I know. But you gotta mean. See, you see what I mean. He's only listening. He's only giving Joe Joe Coy respect because he's probably got a really shiny what because Joe at this time was obviously making a lot of money. He still does now, but probably back then even more. He probably have he probably one of those simple rich guys, right? He looks very plain. But you know little details. He's got a really expensive watch on. Maybe he's got a Laura Piana polo. Maybe he pulled up to the office in a Bentley. That's why Brendan is being so fucking submissive and listening to him like an elder statement because he makes money. Not because of any other reason. Pretty wild, isn't it? If you don't make money, you don't exist in Brendan's world. Maintain that. And you know, and, and, and like I said, not everybody knows that you... Just because you're sold out doesn't mean everybody knows you're there. Oh no! You I'm ever just, leave a market I'm and they get a tweet going, "Hey, when are you coming to Nashville?" It's like motherfucker, I was just wrong? there. Oh, dude, that breaks my heart. Yeah. When someone goes, "Job, when the f when are you coming to Indianapolis?" I'm like, dude, I was there last weekend. And and the reason why is because you thought the pod let them know. Here's the other. But if you would have done, you're right. Here's the other thing. So when I was in Indianapolis, um, I did. Um, this like inter radio interview in ESPN, but it's a local uh, like Indianapolis uh, ESPN station. I didn't want to do it. I kept blowing it off. And my brother's like, "Hey, man, they really want you to do this. Just do it." It's like, "All right, I do it." The guy was great. Really, you know, a lot of these uh, radio DJs have been doing. Actually, gonna I'm actually gonna make a note of that. See if I can find some of these local radio appearances from Brendan. Maybe we should try and dig them out try and scour the web and try and see these local appearances from him. There might be some gold in there. Forever. Yeah. Really good dude. I get done. And uh, I get text from the club goes, whatever you did, fucking move, move some tickets. Yeah. And my brother texts me, goes, man, so many guys that I work with just heard you on the radio. I'm like, what? That, that shit still work. Yes. I, it's, I, a, it's not that it's I didn't not come dead. Up with those. I, I, I Also, Brendan's completely missing what Joe is saying to him. Joe isn't saying go on local radio to sell tickets he's saying just go on local radio just speak to your fans get your name out there just shoot the shit with them people will people like that sort of shit and maybe that could result in tickets he's not said he obviously mentioned hey if you sell out it's good to turn up but he's mostly mentioning it as like an exercise in humbleness an exercise in like you know keeping your ego in check an exercise in just being a you know but brendan is looking at it like this is another opportunity to sell tickets. Sell tickets, like, bro. Not everything has to have a monetary gain or like a you know whatever at the end of it. So you could just be doing it just for shits and giggles. Let me just go on this guy's show that's got ten listeners just for the fucking fun of it. Brennan said, "Nah, I'm only gonna go in there if it's gonna make me money." I came up with it in a different kind of like a podcast is king. You don't you don't need to do this other stuff. Pod Podcast is king is fucking hilarious. This is where the audio is king started from. He used to say podcast is king, not audio is king. 
Cass is king, but so is radio. No, what I'm saying is it's that that's another platform that's still. It's the same thing, really, isn't it? Podcasting radio is the same thing. That's what you're trying to say. Radio is probably more commercial, more you know, because it's obviously accessible to most people. Not accessible, but you know, people are mostly used to it. But it's the same thing. Like, why wouldn't if you can do a podcast, why can't you just do a radio spot? I guess radio spot is different because you have to go there in person. Blah blah blah. I understand, but sometimes you have to call in or wake up really early. But fucking hell, Papa man, like you can't understand. Like he's really struggling to understand this point. Exists. Yeah, you're right. And and, and like <laughs> yeah, podcast is king. But like, dude, morning TV is still the shit. Yeah, everyone, like morning news has is, it on KTLA. Or Good point. Big up pity. Good fucking point. Podcast is king of calling killing comedy podcast is king of killing comedy that is so fucking accurate especially for nowadays ironically enough podcasting made most of these middle average rubbish comedians multi-millionaires it changed the the scope of their lives it harnessed it put the control of their careers back into their hands right because a lot of the comedians say they were kind of at the behest of like agents and studios and networks. Podcasting gave these guys control again of their own future. It kind of secured their long-term future. It allowed them to support their family, to finally go on that honeymoon, to get married, to have another kid, to buy another car, buy another house. But it also, they paid a huge price because across the board, they, all of their stand-ups have got worse. Every person that has a prominent podcast at the moment who's also a stand-up comedian, their stand-up comedy is definitely worse for it. So podcast is king. Podcast did make these people kings and queens, but it definitely has done irreversible damage to their stand-up. Because now most of us think most of these guys are fucking awful when it comes to stand-up. And a lot of it has to do with them wasting, you'd imagine, a lot of that comedic power, energy, karma, whatever, on podcast and not leaving it for the stage. Or maybe we, we're so ex overexposed to them on the podcast, we get used to them, we realize it's not funny. So when they get on stage, the jokes don't hit the same. Are you kidding me? Like, you should be on KTLA. You should be like, you're talk gonna, to you're them. You're going to hate me. You want to hear this? What? For KTLA, for promotion, my special. You didn't do it? I pretended I was sick. I'm pretending you're on TV. I'm pretending you're looking at me right now. What the fuck are you doing? I know. I know. That, dude. I know. Yes, you do that. I should have. Yes, you talk to. How many times has Brendan in his career pretended he's sick and not done things? I bet you it must be the double digits. The amount of times Brendan has re pretended to be ill and he's not actually ill. Because I think he, 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 he admitted it about COVID. He didn't believe in COVID. He didn't believe in masks. He was very anti-COVID, very anti-mask when it came out. He thought he was an essential worker. Comedy was the most important thing that people needed. He still went on tours despite all the fucking mandates and restrictions. But he still used COVID for his benefit. When he didn't want to do a gig, when he didn't sell tickets, he'd say he got COVID. <laughs> I would love to know the amount of times Brendan cancelled gigs because he said he got COVID. I bet you if the number's high, high, high. Sam Rubin. I should have got a call from Joe Coy. Yeah, man. I, I, that's to me. And that's in anything you do, though, to just assume that mm. everybody knows your business. No, oh, no. I have I have a I have a I have a billboard up. So everyone should come to my restaurant. No, man. You need to go out there and tell everybody you have a restaurant. No, I'm with you. Exactly. I don't assume everybody. I'm not that naive. No, I my know you're not that big. No, I'm, you, well, my thing is. I'm no, definitely. Your ego is that big. Brendan's ego for sure is that big. He definitely thinks everybody knows who he is for sure. Like, it's not my demographic. They're older. And like, isn't that what you that's want? That's should do it. Yeah, you're right. That's the one. That Hold on. He doesn't want older people at his shows. Who does that? No wonder. Look at that smile. No wonder he failed at comedy. He's choosing people. He's picking. No. His preference of people who should attend these shows is based on age. What the fuck? Surely if you're putting on a show, you want anybody and everybody to come to your show. You don't really care who they are. Legs, no arms, no eyes, tall, short, fat, small, whatever. Please come to my show. Please 
buy tickets. Please sit in those seats. Please fill this bitch out. Please buy drinks. Please buy plates and plates full of fucking tater tots and chicken strips and fries and hot dogs and burgers so that the club can see that I sell this place out. You all buy stuff, you all eat stuff and you all tip well. Please do that so I can get more bookings. Why are you going to be like, oh yeah, no one over the age of 42, please. Nobody over 55, please. Actually, can we get no brothers? And when I mean no brothers, can we get no blacks? It's like, what? <laughs> that, yeah, man, you're, 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 you're right. eating your words right now. That's not my demo. What the fuck? What is your demo? Your demo is anything that anyone that likes to laugh. There is no age. Yeah. What is your demo? Anybody without a brain. <laughs> what is your demo <laughs> undiagnosed cte victims what is your demo <laughs> yeah you're right there is no race like I, I sold out in singapore how the fuck did that happen well it's not singapore. no i'm just saying and you can too yeah for sure oh look at the racism that's funny that, that, so that's you know what that was actually funny I'm going to bring uh, Brendan credit. That was actually fucking funny. I saw that Singapore. How the fuck that happened? Brendan, come on. <laughs> that was actually funny. I'm not going to lie. Good on to Brendan. That's the one. That, that, yeah, man. You're, you're, oh, you're, you're right. eating your words right now. That's that not my demo. Really what the fuck? Funny. What is your demo? Your demo is anything that anyone that likes to laugh. There is no age. Yeah, you're right. There is no race. <laughs> like I, I sold out in Singapore. How the fuck did that happen? Well, no, I'm just saying, and you. <laughs> uh, that was so good, bro. I sold out of Singapore. How did that happen? Well, come on. You know, you know how that happened. <laughs> oh, one more time. That was really funny. I actually laughed at that. There is no age. Yeah, you're right. There is no race. Like, I, I sold out in Singapore. How the fuck did that happen? Well. No, I'm just saying. And you can too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like See, He didn't take the joke. He's trying to tell him seriously. He's trying, trying to laugh. Chin laughed though. Because Chin is fucking... Chin is actually one of the biggest cucks for Brendan. Maybe even more so than Brian Callan. I'm trying to see it. He's really hitched his wagon to Brendan. If Brendan goes down, he goes down too. I guess. Good. But Chin is really in it for the long run. Like, like you should always look at somebody and not hate on them but be inspired by them like yo that dude sold out an arena i can sell an arena 100 percent. 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. can we talk about being funny please can both of you guys talk about getting on stage perfecting your funny you know recording your sets looking up you know re-listening to shit I don't know. When is the last time you heard a comedian talk about that? Oh shit, I was on stage, I recorded my set. The gaps between the words were a bit too long. I pronounced this word a bit weird. I swapped out a certain phrase. I put the start of the story at the end and then the end of the start. I changed the names around. You know, when do you, what, you don't, they don't talk about that anymore. They just talk about fucking marketing, clips to put out, crowd, shitty crowd work where they berate some guy for having like red hair. It's like, bruh. Always use that as inspiration. Oh, let let yeah. the haters hate because that's only going to feed your fire, bro. Yeah. Anyone that hates is just going to be only for the only person that gets affected by shouting out hatred or 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 throwing hate your way. They're the only ones that suffer because they're using all their energy to promote your product. Yeah. That's how you got to look at shit. Don't ever think of like, yo, this dude's hating on me. That's going to affect my business. No, it's not. Yeah. It's going to help your business. Wow. Look at Joy. Look at Joe, Joy. Look at, I can't, why I keep saying Joy? Look at Joe giving Brendan an absolute schooling on like how to deal with haters, how to promote himself. And it's just going in and out, out, in, out, in through one ear, out of the other. Brendan never got it. He never understood how to harness the hate for his benefit. They don't matter. They do not matter. They're homeless cats. It's like a homeless person critiquing my art, which is fucking wild to say he thinks he creates art. It's fucking crazy. The only art he really created was that fucking truck flip. That was really artful in, in his own way. But yeah, what a hilarious guy. 
I, I, because you're still that guy is giving other people that guy is using his platform to to give them a a, a, a chance to figure out whether or not they hate you to as make well. their own assumptions that's all he's yeah. doing. He's going, hey, you guys, I hate that guy. What are your thoughts? You know, probably about 80% of you going to be like, I kind of like him. So thanks for telling me. Yeah, thanks. And man. then the other 20% is like, yo, with you. And those dickheads you don't want anyway. I remember I asked you, I went, I went hey, how, how do you deal with hate? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a baby, isn't it? How do you deal with hate? It's not, honestly, surely at some point you have to look at the hate and think to yourself, they all can't just hate me for no reason. There has to be some morsel, some iota, some hint, some pinch of truth to what they say. You figure out what it is, and then you know what you do when you're smart. You lean into that. Whatever they don't like, you start to lean into it properly until it becomes very obvious that you're playing it up. And then guess what? The haters disappear because it's not fun anymore because they know you're aware of it. But instead, this motherfucker... You know, thin skin McGee over here. How do you deal with hate? Bruh, you're a former UFC fucking fighter. You're a former fucking heavyweight. It's not that deep. People are taking the piss out of your pronunciation. Guess what? Pronounce better, bitch. If you can't pronounce better, lean into it. And start pronouncing everything terribly. You know? Do that. And then see how far your career goes. God damn it, bro. And you just sent me a picture of a racehorse with blinders. Yeah. On like <laughs> Big up Cooper T. Cooper TX. Don't give him hope. No, sorry, don't give him tips. Bruh, it's too late for that, man. He doesn't like... I've said it before. There's no hope for this guy. He's not listening to anything. He's already fucking... What is he? Early 40s? Three kids? Married? He's not going to change anyway. Even if even if he got the tips given to him in a fucking 600-page dossier. Dossier. Dossier? Dossier. He would never fucking read it. Even if he sent it to him in one page, he wouldn't fucking read it. He doesn't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with him. Which is obviously the best bit because that's what makes him a great low cow. Lack of self awareness is the number one ingredient to top low cows. <laughs> I did. I literally. He goes. I, How I do you do that hate? picture? My phone. Did you really? Oh yeah. Because it's real. I always ask people way more successful than me. Like, how do you deal with like haters and the activity? And you just I always ask people way more successful than me because the people that are way more successful to me are the only people that can talk to me. People that say that sort of stuff are the worst, isn't it? I surround myself with winners. All my boys are tigers. Shut up. Just, I mean, he didn't say anything. He just put, sent me a picture of a fucking race or these a two horse with on. fucking a race horse. And the horse is like fucking with <laughs> blinders. That motherfucker yeah. only has one thing in front of him the fucking prize yep. in front of him. Yep. And all your hate. What's the prize? Being funny or selling tickets? Let's see what they say. Haters are the, are the people sitting in the stands yep. betting against you. Yep. Horse number five is gonna suck. That, that look at him. Look at the legs on the horse number five. But how? That's and the horse number five doesn't even see them. Yeah. Brendan doesn't like it though. He doesn't want to have even people betting against him. That's not nice. That's not nice. It's like, bro, he doesn't want him to exist. If it was up to Brendan, he would definitely press the button to exterminate all haters. If that meant gassing them, if that meant nuclear bombs on their homes, if that meant poisoning them, if that meant hanging them, he'd definitely press that button. He'd be pressing it like that, especially if he got to unique. <laughs> you break that fucking button. <laughs> care. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care about their opinion. <laughs> He's gonna show them that I'm gonna win, and that's you. You're the fucking racehorse with the blinders on, bro. Yeah. And remember, everyone in the stands wishes they were a fucking racehorse. Correct. I love this cope as well. Everybody hates on you because they wish they could be you. This is such a funny cope because I swear the internet has got to a place nowadays where surely people know people just troll for trolling sake because it's fun. Don't people realize that? There are people out there who just troll for the sport of it because they know it gets under people's skin. They know it can get a reaction out of people. That's what they live for. There's no it, there's no I, bit of them that wants to be on the stage themselves, that wants to be a stand-up comedian, that wants to be friends with Rogan. Like, it's so funny. Another key ingredient, doing nothing wrong and everything correct. Yeah. Shout out Ricky picture. Exactly, 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 exactly. We got engine range exactly. That's DSP. I did everything right. I did not. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Huh? Um, Wings of Redemption, same one. Wings of Redemption, same place. Wings of Redemption. I did everything right. I did nothing wrong. Boogie two nine eight eight. I did everything right. I did nothing wrong. All of these guys are all the same. 
there's nothing in them that ever says hey you're the common denominator every time things go wrong you're one of the people involved could it maybe be you no it's not me circumstances it's a society it's the government it's youtube it's Bethesda, it's Bethesda's fault right <laughs> playstation fucked me you know the pc fucked me the controller fucked me kelly fucked me it's fucking keemstar's fault <laughs> it's tevin's fault always somebody else's fault bobby lee fucked me Correct. Everyone wants to be the right hands down. Yep. Everyone in that audience wishes they were on stage. Yep. That's why they're paying to come see you. Correct. Oh my god, that is insane. Do these comedians honestly think everybody that watched stand up comedy wants to be a stand up comedian? What? Surely you have to know by this point. Anybody that goes to watch you is actually your fan. I don't think you're going to get many haters in a the crowd. They're actually fans of you. Percentage of those people would... Is it possible they could be, you know, aspiring stand-up comedians? Maybe. But I'd say a stand-up comedy show is probably the closest thing to a safe space. Because no one that isn't not a fan is going to make an effort to buy a ticket to go and see you just to hate. It's not going to happen. Let's be real. So I don't know why Joe is saying that. Like huh if you're a stand-up comedian you don't go watch loads of shows anyway you're spending loads of time on stage that's what you should be doing you should be doing loads of open mics you should be fucking perfecting your your craft you shouldn't be on stage listening to other comedians because that also might fuck up your comedy you might start copying them you know um unconsciously so this is a weird just a, like what so everybody that goes to a festival also wants to be in a band is that what you're trying to say uh no hands down you won already it doesn't matter like it, and that's like i always say like I, I always say this like it doesn't matter what you do in life man like there's haters in every aspect of what you, oh, in, everything in, in, everything I'm, 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 but again that's the thing cooper i don't even think a lot of people hate them that's the thing i think people miss i don't know i don't i don't think a lot of people hate them people just enjoy like i can see some hate with some people some locals get hate like you know, I could say definitely hand on heart, like, you know, DSP and those type of people, like, they definitely get hate. I'm definitely one of them, right? You live to see the end of DSP, right? When he gets fucking demonetized from YouTube and he's not able to pay his bills and shit and he has to get a regular job. That's how the person like, you actually want to see suffer. Um, big up. Um, Stand up comedians must remember if they were born 300 years ago, they would have been dancing jesters. Exactly. Exactly, Fyodor. Exactly. No more than fucking dancing gestures. But yeah, big up Theodore. What I was saying was like, I don't think a lot of these guys get hate. Some of them just, it's just fun to laugh at. A lot of guys that laugh or point and laugh at Bert, I don't think they wish they could also be 50-year-old functioning alcoholics. They just find it incredible that this guy exists. Like, wow, there's this human being who's this age, who's a grown-up with a family, who's able to like live like this. Like, It's just funny to take the piss out of it because it's so fucking absurd. But that's the thing, these guys don't realise how absurd they are, weirdly enough, which is strange, isn't it? Imagine not realising how absurd you come across to regular people. You think you're completely normal and there should be no reason why people should maybe hate on you. It's like, mm, you, there's a lot of reasons why people should not should hate on you. You're really easy to hate, just for your mere existence. But hey, what do I know? Be at your workplace. Dude, imagine, oh, for sure, but imagine Kevin Durant. Yeah. Best basketball player on earth, maybe the most skilled. Hey, and, and you know I'm biased. I'm from Seattle. We drafted that guy. Correct. So I like I'm in love with I, he's he's my favorite player. Yeah. And think about it, Kevin Durant. He's my favorite player. I have black friends. We, come on, Brendan. You don't have to convince us. Really? Kevin Durant's your favorite player? Sure. The hate got so bad he created fake burner accounts. Yeah. To roast people online. Yeah. He didn't want to deal with it. Mm. That's crazy. Though. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah, I love him. I love that guy. I mean, I got a Brooklyn jersey coming. <laughs> He wanted he wanted to hate he wanted to hate so bad but Joe wasn't dunking into it but it's hate. Got I gotta get the Brooklyn. God, God man, you know that it's. I love how he laughed at that. By the way, the Brook of course the Brooklyn jersey shows how much your fan you are. By the way, where are all those jerseys? Are they all in a bin? Are they still in the cupboard? I wonder where all those jerseys are. When he was cosplaying as a sports fan and wearing different team jerseys and jumping on bandwagons every week, I wonder where those jerseys are. 
this one particular one he wore that was really nice. He wore this one that was from a baseball team that like won something. It was like a cream. It was like, do you guys remember that jersey that Brendan wore? I think it was like a Mexican team, a Latino team or one of them teams that did really well. It's like a cream jersey. It was really fucking nice. Really, I think it was like cream or something. It was limited edition. They didn't make many of them. I think it was like a commemorate something they did recently. I think it was like for a Latino baseball team or something like that. I don't know, but regardless, who cares? The absolute, you know, if anyone should know, you're you're an athlete. Yeah, one thing I hate is a guy that's... Oh yeah, cream is part, let's see. Um, limited edition Padres jersey. Because I thought that was really fucking nice. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, that's the one. I think it was that cream one. I think that's the one. That's the one with the pies in the front. I found it. Big up. Uh, who said that? I think Joe from MIA. Big up. I think that was you. I think it was this one. I think the one that Brennan got was this one. That one there with the Padres on the front. Yeah, that's it. The 40th anniversary one. There we go. Padres 40th. I really like This is one of my favorite ones he actually wore. I'm not going to lie. Anniversary jersey. I don't know. I really. I think yeah. He definitely got this one. Oh, is it fiftieth anniversary? Whatever. Fiftieth, fortieth. Who cares? Fiftieth, <laughs> fortieth. Same thing. Maybe it was fiftieth. Maybe it was that one. I don't know. One of them anyway. Was it serp? Okay, people are saying serpentine. Was it serpentine's jersey? Maybe it was this. Yeah. Maybe. Oh yeah. Maybe it was this. You're right. I think it might have been this actually. I think it might have been this. Let's see. Let's just write and Brendan. Let's see if we got anything here. Let's write serpentine to this. Let's see. Okay, nothing. Cool. Maybe it was that. I think it was that though. <laughs> you remember this era? Do you guys remember this era? Do you guys remember this era? Man, oh man, the thick boy era. What happened to this? Big up. I believe KD is Bappa's fave NBA player because use that is the gayest, most lame bandwagon player to be a fan of. Oh yeah, of course, of course, of course, hundred percent. Because he's a bandwagon jumper too, isn't it? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes that that makes a lot of sense. Big up you. Big up, big up, Assad. Appreciate you. Do you guys remember when Brendan wouldn't have Chappelle on the website? He took everybody's pictures, but he didn't put Chappelle up on the store. Maybe because he was too black or something, or he thought he was ugly. Do you guys remember that? They took pictures for the website, but then Brendan didn't put up Chappelle's face, or I think he cropped his face out or something. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> Crop out the uglies. Fucking brutal. I think he cropped out Chappelle's face because he didn't want him on the store. <laughs> oh. But yeah, this this is a, this is the this is the jersey. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. What is the serpent? How does D back? What's that? Serpentine Nike City. What is this about? It's fucking lovely, isn't it? I wonder how much this goes for. How do I have team pay tribute? What's this? Festive music set is a mood outside of the chase field on Monday before the Arizona Diamondbacks fell short. Donning team colors, members of the Phoenix area, Mexican Tambo, what was that? Tamboraza performed the Nel, Ni El Diario, Ni El Dala. Oh, fuck off. Okay, we're not going to fucking read that then. Go away. I'm not fucking disabling shit, you bitch. Cool. That's the jersey though. That's the one. That's a really nice one. That is really fucking nice. I really like that jersey. Me want that. The MLB Diamondbacks. It's fucking lovely, isn't it? It's really nice there. Look, a couple of baddies there wearing them. Oop, not baddies. They're kiddies. Let's take that back. Kiddies, kiddies, kiddies. Ha ha. Not baddies. Kiddies. Ha 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 ha. They're the baddies. Phew. Adults there. We got some adults. We nearly got ourselves crystalline. We nearly got ourselves crystalline there. There's the baddies. Adults. 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 <laughs> Adults, adults. <laughs> Did he sing that? Nah, let's not do that, dark web track. <laughs> Did he sing that? Did he sing that? Oh, the alarms. <laughs> oh, we nearly got in trouble there. We nearly got in trouble. Anyway, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. We did that. We did that. We did that. We did that. Anyway, let's continue there. Finished. 
Oh, that was... <laughs> that was... <laughs> oh, the police emojis is fucking hilarious. Oh, big up everybody. I appreciate all of you. Let's continue. Um, do you guys remember this as well? Do you remember this era of, of Chris D'Elia back in the day when, you know, he used to fucking get on T-Fat K, you know, dappy. But this, this was back in the day where T-Fat K episodes would get like half a million views on like a casual one. No buying of views, just real organic shit. Oh, you know what I realised? Oh my God. Brendan had Sharp's haircut back in the day. Sharp haircut. You know Sharp from No Jumper? That's the same trim that Brendan used to have, right? That's that Sharp trim. Where you like, you shave the sides and you have like a thing lying there and you put it, no? He was like Sharp. That's a Sharp haircut. Sharp one. Church. There we go. Fuck, you know? Okay, cool. Anyway, this is Chris D'Elia taking the shit out of Chin. I think we need Chris D'Elia back on T-Fat K to do this again. Because Chin's been running amok. He needs some of this treatment. Work on the bird. I feel like it's a parrot. Well, you're fucking wrong. Spell my name right. But <laughs> I, just messed up. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen, it's down there, the black one. Yeah, dude. Let me explain something. No, to you. see that? Go nice. back. Go, Go back. back. <laughs> That's not even me. Hey, don't down no, hey, middle. Hey, don't don't talk. Fuck to this guy. Don't talk <laughs> to this guy. Now that that the problem is that looks. Like and I'm guessing W. Back in Chris is funny. Right, the red wow, grass. Look at that. But why? You, so we can see it. That's Make crazy. it go go up. No, up. So we can see what the. No, no, no. Down. Uh, you know, get a new guy. No, no, <laughs> the, no. Graph, the fucking. Let me see the graph. Stop it. You can't. Early deaths. WWF. You've been yelling at Chen all I, podcast. <laughs> Do you remember that era back in the day when Chris was funny and back in the day when Chin was a butt of all jokes? I miss those times. I really fucking miss those times. I swear on my life, I miss those fucking times. I really, really, really do. Another one. We got this one. Loose lipped. This bapa disguises Rinks' bad parenting skills to reassure that he's indeed a beast of a dad. Let's see this lovely Brendan endorsement of his own parenting. We love this, right? When Brendan pats himself on the back for being a b -b 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 beast of a dad. Like, all right, he did how about, it. How about Callan yesterday? I'm firing the kid. We mm. had Sugar uh, uh, mm -hmm. O'Malley on. Mm -hmm. Brian, we're talking before the podcast. Wow. I love that little promotion there. He doesn't do that a lot, innit? You can tell he's getting desperate for views. Back on the fire and the kid, we had, you know, from, like letting people know while he's saying, yeah, back in the day, I'm, you know, the other day I'm sure I'm firing the kid, um, episode number, da -da -da -da, where I sugar my you know, make sure you check it out, like and subscribe. Like, wow, he's really going hard to the promotion, isn't it? Sugar O'Malley, by the way, is hilarious. Did, did he say Sugar O'Malley? Is that what well, I heard? How about Callan yesterday? I'm firing the kid. We mm. had Sugar uh, uh, mm -hmm. O'Malley on. Mm -hmm. Sugar O'Malley. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Firing the kid. We had Sugar uh, uh, mm -hmm. O'Malley on. Firing the kid. We had Sugar uh, uh, mm -hmm. O'Malley on. Firing the kid. We had Sugar uh, uh, mm -hmm. O'Malley on. Mm -hmm. Brian, we're talking before the podcast. He's O'Malley on. Mm -hmm. Brian, we're talking before the podcast. He's like, yeah, man, it's wild. We're talking about being dads. And he's like, yeah, man, like, uh, we were driving to the restaurant. I had to put the newborn in my back seat. He goes, I walk into the restaurant. My wife's like, where the fuck's the baby? He goes, I totally forgot. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no. I was like, you might want to lay low on that story. That, I get it. He goes, you know how it goes, man. I'm you not know, used to the kid. I was cars like, cars have reminders. Rachel has it, Rachel had it on you before we had a kid. We turn the car off, goes, check the back seat. Aw. Look at fucking Eric trying to fucking cop, please. Yeah. No, that's oh, I don't need crazy. That. Yeah. Crazy. That, she would never oh, forget the baby. Need she doesn't that. need that. She just wants it because it's fun to have. Yeah. That's crazy. Callan? Crazy. He might that need it. That's what is... I'm saying. We should inform no. him that there's a, a function. You... Brian forgetting the baby in the backseat and going into the restaurant is probably the perfect encapsulation of like the psyche of a stand up comedian. How self absorbed they all are. They pretend to be like part of a larger organism, a larger community. But if they all went away and only one stayed and they were the only comedian on the earth, the only, oh, the only comedian on the earth, only comedian on earth, they'd be more than happy. They don't need anybody else, literally. All they need is an audience. <laughs> all they need is fans to buy merch and buy tickets to shows. They don't need anyone else. That's all they want. Give me money. Give me things. Shut the fuck up. 
<laughs> everybody else is like whatever hey woman who who i come in and you have a baby deal with that i'm not dealing with that i'm going on the road daddy gotta make some money and the finger bang some waitresses yeah. we should definitely send that is link. so <laughs> when he told me that i was like he goes you know how it goes i'm like no no, no, no that's no. that's actually actually wild right crazy but yeah. to his to well i'm trying to defend him he's like you barely read that the, the funny thing about this is that i get what brian did was kind of wild but this guy is barely at home <clears throat> did he say recently that he didn't recognize his kid because his kid was acting out it's like no your kid's been doing this for a while you just haven't been around to see it You've been usually on the road selling tickets. Now you don't sell tickets. Now suddenly you're seeing what your kid does because you're actually in his life more because you're home. But they all do the same thing. They all are fairly absent parents and they all justify it because they're, oh, I'm putting food on the table. I'm supporting my family. So like, no, you actually enjoy not being at home. You actually don't want to look after your kids, which is, I, I think it would be more respectful if they actually did that. So, hey, no, I've got a wife. That's her responsibility. She raises the kids, looks after the home. I'm on the road. That's what I do. But they try and lie and because they want everything. They want to be beast of the dads. They want beast of comics. They want beast of they want be beast of fucking podcasters. You know, beast of friends, beast of archers. They want everything. There's nothing that they they're doing that they just want to do, like, you know, to be regarded or whatever. They want to be the best. Regardless of the best, but they don't want to do the best things to get there. So as bad as what Brent Brian did, I think they all have a version of that in their own way. Didn't Brendan literally leave his wife after she had a miscarriage and still go on tour? And he uploaded pictures of himself in a jacuzzi while his wife's literally posting pictures of herself in the hospital and stuff, crying. It's like, come on, bro. Come on. Like, no, but yeah, I never had the kid in my car. So we're all going to the restaurant. And I get in the restaurant. And she's like, where the fuck is the kid? And he's like, oh, shit. I just spent money on another base. The Brian thing makes it worse because he just had a, re he just had a baby. Both of these kids are probably under five. New kids, anyway, with this new wife. So that's what makes it worse. Because he says, I'm not used to having a baby. It's like, bro, you just had a kid. Like, surely that was a test run for, like, having a kid in the year 2020s. Like, how can you not, you know, insane. But hey. What can you do? What can you do? What oh, I love how this picture, by the way, I just realized. You see the picture of um, Chris D'Elia, this, um, this illustration. Brian Brennan definitely doesn't look like that. But look at his illustration. Did you see this? Look at this. Whoever illustrated this picture gave Chris a droopy eye. You know, Chris has got that left eye that's like droopy. Like he had a stroke or something. I don't know if he had a stroke after he got cancelled for like allegedly diddling kids. But that left eye of his is like kind of droopy. He's got like a weird droopy like left eye. The illustrator did that. Big up the illustrator. That's fucking amazing. They gave that eye a bit of a droop right there, if you can see it. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. We got the illustrator that did that. Absolutely brilliant work. Um, oh, yeah. You guys forgot, didn't you? You guys fucking forgot, didn't you? you did you guys remember this? You guys, Do you remember this? I, you, I told you before this, right? I told you guys, do you guys remember when Brendan used to do this weird thing where he'd be riding his fucking bikes and then be sticking his tongue out? when he's riding his peloton in the garage and do this weird like drip 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 thing i don't know what that was all about but did you guys see this look 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 look, look, look. do you guys remember this back in the day the drip drip shit drippy his tongue is all yellow big up damn three random shows in a row this deserves a 10 bucks donation yes but before i forget i just really wanted to say Bean cheese, 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 every night. <sighs> big up, big up, big up, Wingus McDingus. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate ya. Big up, Wingus McDingus. Big up, Wingus McDingus. Appreciate you so much. Thank you for that, my friend. But yeah, look at his tongue. Look at the color of his tongue. It's actually yellow. Look at that. Oh, actually, to give you guys a warning, those of you who are watching this and don't like to see Brendan's tongue, please fast forward about five minutes after you're watching this. If you're watching now, turn away. We're going to be doing a lot of analysis on Brendan's tongue, the thickness of it, the color, um, the fucking density, the plaque that's on it, the whatever. We're going to be doing some very encyclo... No, we're going to be doing some very... Um, detailed analysis of the tongue so if you don't like seeing brendan's tongue please turn this stream off 
lower the volume, walk away, do something, fast forward later, but it's gonna go down. Okay, cool. Look at that. Ugh, look at that. Look at it. That's how I know he's got. That's how I know you can't talk properly. Look how thick his tongue is. It's, it looks like it's kind of inflamed. You can see the yellowness all over there, right? And then he's, I don't know why he's writing drippy. Like, I love how he's, I love how he's tagging Peloton and that girl, Robin NYC. That's that runner, right? The really hot one. That really, the really hot ripped one who's like really famous for like doing great Peloton classes. I think she's, she's obviously from New York. I think I saw her on like a Casey Neistat video. He's obviously so desperate for fucking recognition, so he's tagging them so they can retweet him. Not knowing that, imagine if a girl sees this on her Instagram or on her DMs, like through the Instagram stories, like, ugh, what the fuck is this? I don't want that. <laughs> what was this? Honestly, I want to know what this all was. What a strange era, Brendan. Peloton era, Brendan. I forgot this era, right? We've got whiskey era, running era, e-bike era, Peloton era. There were so many fucking eras that he's had in the past, right? Fucking hilarious. Look at this. Look at the color of that tongue, though. And also, that's the house he moved out of, right? I don't know. I don't think he lives there anymore. Look at that. Look at that face. That's a fucking jump scare, isn't it? You can feel the breath. You can feel the breath. You can feel the breath. You can feel the breath through your fucking screen right now. I swear to God, you can feel it. You can actually smell it. If you if you smell that, like, you can you can actually probably smell it. Like, oh, <laughs> can you imagine? Well, his breath must have smelled like back in those days. Probably barely brushes. Doesn't believe in showering. Probably he's the kind of person that puts deodorant on after a workout, right? You know the type of guys. I bet you Brendan's the type of guy that puts deodorant on after he works out instead of showering. I bet he's one of those type of guys. Or a guy that does a, a sink bath, a, a wash basin, but like just washes his armpits after a workout. That's all right. And then puts deodorant on. I bet you. I bet you, man. I bet you he does that. I bet you any doubt he's that kind of guy. But let's analyze that tongue. Let's analyze that fucking tongue. Look at that. Look how thick it is. There's some shit on there, isn't it? There is some fucking shit on there. Look at that. That's that that's that shit that you that's that that's the kind of tongue somebody uh, big up appreciate you. What does Baba's breath smell like? I reckon tartar, <sighs> farts, and Tegan semen. <sighs> Let's just imagine, it's probably like, back in those days, what's that brand of whiskey he used to, what's that whiskey that everyone drinks, that Brent, that Rogan was drinking back then? Buffalo Trace, right? Brendan's breath probably smelled like a mixture of Buffalo Trace, um, whatever street food diary things they ate at the time, and maybe some coffee. Because he used, to, he used to have those, this is also the era that Brenner used to do nitros. You remember that? What's that? Yeah, I think it's a nitro coffee, right? Those like cold presses where the, it's really strongly caffeinated and shit. Um, he'd have one of those. He had like seven of those. So not seven, one, he'd have seven. So I think he, that's what his mixture of breath smelled like. But look at that, man. Look at that. Look at that. That's the kind of tongue the character on Fallout, ghoul, the ghoul on Fallout would would love to munch on that. There's a lot of juice in that tongue. That's a that's the kind of tongue the ghouls on Fallout would cut out and they would savor. That would be one of their fucking treats. They dip that in fucking barbecue sauce. You know? They dip it in fucking ranch. Dip it in fucking sweet and sour. That's the kind of thing the ghouls would love from Fallout. They'd fucking love that tongue. God almighty, bro. What an era. What a fucking era drippy you know i don't the drippy thing is weird because it sounds like he's coming but he's saying drippy about his tongue and look at the jump scare after imagine getting that in your dms as a woman this is robin look at look at robin nyc right she's that again i i've knew about her from um casey nice thing but she's a well-known fitness trainer woman 
Imagine this uh, this attractive ripped woman getting those fucking messages in her DMs from Brendan. <laughs> Imagine how she must have felt. Right? Imagine how she must have felt seeing those fucking messages from Brendan with his tongue stuck out. Imagine. 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 <laughs> Imagine how she felt seeing Brendan's tongue in her DMs as she wakes up in the morning. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> She must have been like, what the fuck, bro? Another one. Here's, here's another one. Here's another one for you, blood class. Again. Oh, he, he, he did another person. Fit. Who's Fit X Kindle? Who's that? Fit X Kendall. Who the fuck is that? Who's Fit X Kendall? Is this a baddie? I'm assuming this is a baddie, isn't it? Baddie, addy, addy. Of course it is. If I followed Brendan, I'd see the fucking likes, but I don't. But I bet Brendan's in all the fucking likes, isn't it? Should we search for one? Of, can you search likes? You can't, can you? What's this one? Seven days ago. It's not possible to search likes, is it? Can we see it? Oh, I, I bet you he's in here, though. I bet you. Oh, you got, okay, let's search. Let's see followers. I bet you he's in here. <laughs> I bet you he's in here. He has to be in here. Oh, okay. Only fuck, man. I bet you he fucking is in there. Oh man. If I was following Papa, I would have been able to see. But I bet you he's in her fucking. He's definitely in her fucking followers list. He's for sure. Fucking hell. Who the hell is that? The contrast is. Cr it's mad to think that that person's body is in there, isn't it? Fatness is weird, isn't it? You don't see it when you're fat, but like. She has that frame inside of her. She's just got all this other shit around it. Wild. He can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. Big up, uh, Angel Angel. Appreciate you. Nothing I... I'm not going to lie. Nothing I hate more than conventionally attractive women like trying to like run the grift of like being an every girl girl like no matter how much weight this girl loses she's never going to change that face all right i'm unfortunately right she's never going to look as hot as you ever so it's like and i also don't understand why girls seem to gravitate to really conventionally attractive women also who've you know had the benefit of like you know being athletic their entire lives you know having I don't know. It's just, it's just strange. Again, I, I, I can't get my thoughts out properly, but I've noticed it a lot. There's, there's a lot of this online. Like girls who clearly did a lot of sports when they were younger, who then got into fitness, who happen to be really attractive, also have loads of fans of like regular dorky, fat looking girls who seem to look at them as like idols and icons. It's like, that's not really a good example. This woman's been doing gymnastics since she was like nine. She had, she had a six pack when she was 10. Like, <laughs> that's not, like, a good example to follow, you know? Her mum taught her how to, like, you know, her mum probably fed her broccoli and pretended it was fucking chicken nuggets, and she lo loved it ever since. But anyway, what do I know? What do I fucking know? What do I fucking know? <laughs> Big up, Asad. I want to reenact this pic with, us, with, <laughs> with Eric Griffin. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh. so um let's move on let's do some video clips let's do actually let's do um let's do the new podcast cringe He's got a Burt one. Let's do a new podcast screen. She's got a what? It's called Tom and Burt Just Screw Themselves. Let's see this one from a two days ago or from a day ago. Sorry. Let's see what podcast screen just saying. Let's see what my nigga podcast screen just saying. Why are you doing? Why are front you like teeth? this? Yeah. Oh, my front teeth don't touch. So try. They don't touch. Go. I can't. They don't touch. You can. No, right. My oh. front teeth don't touch. 
Oh. Feels so good. <laughs> What's that? Zin? I was f***ing Leanne the other night. Yeah. And I said, and, and I was like, and I f***ing threw a breaker in. <laughs> and she goes, uh, what, do you, what did you just do? And I said, I put a breaker in. Yeah. Made it come. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I will never be able to. Jesus Christ, bro. Don't you, do you guys have friends like that? I remember I had one friend like that who'd like be uninvitedly, without encouragement, uninvited, will just start telling us explicit details of what he did to his girlfriend the night before. It's like, bro, we know her, man. She's also our friend. Like, relax. Like, we don't need to, like, we didn't ask you for this information. It was so weird. And I remember ages ago, the theory that was going on at the time, because we haven't seen this guy in a while. I remember the theory was that he might have been secretly gay. I think a lot of guys say that. Like, allegedly, that's one of the telltale signs when you're, like, struggling with your own sexuality is to, like, be excessive, excessively vulgar, excessively descriptive, not vulgar, unnecessarily so. Like, provide details that nobody actually asks for. And that sometimes is, like, you overcompensating. I don't know if that's true, though. You could just be a fucking weirdo and a creep. That's also the case because, you know, to attribute everything that is a bit weird and creepy to, like, homophobic, to, to homosexuals it's kind of homophobic you know what I mean in a weird way <laughs> to say oh yeah he must be gay that's why he's doing that isn't it's his own way homophobic but I remember this guy was like so bizarre he'd like like why are you telling us all these deep like we don't need to know keep it yourself to express to all of you watching this right now just how far gone these guys are you know how you watch a podcast over several years and it starts small you get in at the ground level and then slowly it picks up momentum people start catching on the production value improves and the content just gets better and better mm. tom and bird are pretty much the exact opposite of that I just really, when you think they've hit rock bottom i really wish right i really wish i would have started taking youtube seriously and doing more videos on this sort of stuff when i was a fan of tfat k it would have been really cool to see the evolution of my reactions and you guys what you're saying in the chat and the comments and stuff throughout the years that would have been so sick to look back on to see like oh my god did you guys see the new episode of tfat k oh man chris was fucking hilarious did you hear what brian said did you hear a dumb thing that brendan said oh my god Theo, man who's this Theo guy he's fucking sick whoa will sasso yeah 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 imagine how that would have been and then slowly like what the fuck's happening to the show that we all love da -da -da -da, do you know what i mean like that would have been good to see because i guess podcast cringe is kind of doing it in real time with um two bears one cave because it seems like he started off being a fan of Tom and all those guys, you know, before. So he's going through it in real time and he's obviously documenting it. But I wish I would have done that with T5K back in the day. They reach a new low and you can always tell from the comment section. This whole podcast has turned into advertisements for addictions. Mm -hmm. Imagine taking advice from Bart on substances and addiction. How has Bert got so far in life while being so delusional? Just one complaint, not enough ads in this one. By the way, that delusional comment, I unfortunately, being delusional is also a key ingredient for being very successful. Delulu is like one of the main ingredients for success. The more delulu you are, the more lacking in shame you have, the more inability to cringe. Like Jojo Siwa is a good example of it. Weird tangent. Do Jojo Siwa, why is she so successful? as a kiddie entertainer and shit and now transitioning into being a singer because she has no ability to feel shame maybe because she's born on the internet but there's something about this young girl that she has no ability to feel shame to be embarrassed to be cringed out by her like it's not, it doesn't exist in her head she's fucking madonna do you know what i mean and the delulu the lack of cringe the lack of ability to be cringed out by yourself you're gonna you can achieve anything in the world because most of the things holding us all back is, you know, embarrassment. Oh my God, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be a shit. Like, no, 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 no. Get rid of all that shit. Get rid of that shit right now and you too can be successful. So far in life while being so delusional. Just one complaint, not enough ads in this one. I love the idea of having a thing. We get it. You love drinking in nicotine packs. <laughs> Two bears, one infomercial with commercials <laughs> and ad breaks. World record for how many adverts in one podcast. Nothing better than watching an entire fan base slowly turn on these guys. 
Now, let me give you some context. I made a video back in January titled The Podcast Scam You Didn't Know About, and in that video, I showed how guys like Rogan, Schultz, Tom and Bert, Theo Von, The Nelk Boys, Tucker Carlson, were all promoting Zinn nicotine pouches without declaring them as a sponsor. And I raised the question as to whether or not there was a commercial relationship between those podcasters and Philip Morris International, the big tobacco company that owns Zinn. Now, Shortly after I published that video, I received an email from Philip Morris International's Director of Communications Whoa. saying that they have no relationship with any of the podcasters mentioned in my video. What? So I made a follow-up video where I broke down the email and exposed more issues, but within 20 minutes, I had to take it down and it's never been seen since. I had to get my lawyer involved, but we weren't able to come to a resolution. Wow. So I finally decided to republish that video on Patreon, where I explain why it was taken down and why I decided to start a Patreon account. So you can go and check that out via the link below if you're interested. I'll talk more about this at the very end of the video for those of you who want to sign up. Yeah, good little plug there, bro. Podcast Cringe is a business, man. Look at him. Yeah. Right, the little bait there, like you want to know more about Zin? Head to my fucking Patreon, bitches. But wow, I had no idea Zin was in that deep. Can to be fair, this is reminding me of that Rogan thing. Do you remember back in the day, guys? You guys are if you're into the podcast law. Do you remember back in the day Rogan would not declare his McDonald's thing? Because I always felt it was a bit of a promo marketing thing. He'd be sitting there. Oh, I really want some McDonald's. And then he'd order fucking whatever McDonald's he'd order. And they'd be opening the bags on the, on the pod live, watching. I think it was usually during the fight campaigns or something. It's like, this feels like an ad. Rogan's always a fitness freak. He's always talking about being on keto and stuff. And suddenly he's eating McDonald's. It's like, what? It always felt a bit hard, heavy-handed, kind of. I always felt like that was a slight ad. So I wonder how they get around that sort of stuff. Because most of the stuff you've got to declare... So I wonder why he doesn't declare that sort of shit. Because it clearly is a, an ad. Why not just say it's an ad? Hmm. But if this video gets taken down, I'll put it up on Patreon immediately. I've taken a lot more care with my wording here, so hopefully it stays up. However, after this episode of Two Bears, One Cave, I have a better understanding of exactly what's going on here. So let me take you through it step by step. This was the opening 60 seconds of the podcast without their intro sting, which I cut out. We are back. I got to tell you, there's this thing that happened over the last few months, which is that everybody has discovered the wonder of just nicotine straight to the Buddy, system. You, let me tell and you, I, like, I didn't know where you're going with this. Wow. Look at this. Unash it's the lack. Of, you know what it is? It's the lack of shame. Similar to the DJ world. DJs that I loved and listened to, especially during the plague. No, plague, oof. Especially during the fucking pandemic when they were doing the plague raves. It was kind of disgusting because the most DJs that were refusing to sit down and not tour and were kind of literally, you know, spreading the virus around the world, playing these plague raves in third world countries and shit because they had, you know, not as stringent re restrictions on travel to other places. They were the ones that made the most money. That was a mad thing about it. It's like, you guys are at the top of the game anyway. You are the ones that possibly can survive, you know, without doing a gig for two months. But you're still doing them. Even at the height of COVID. Unapologetically. You have all the money and you're just hoarding more of it. It's like, fucking hell. Give us a fucking break or give someone else a fucking chance. Nah. Same with this. They all get, they get, they both get, the high probably amounts of booking fees both of tom and burt sell out arenas and still they want more what kind of loser discovers nicotine in their 40s yeah exactly yeah is it yeah exactly that's a good point <laughs> discovering nicotine patches in your 40s is a is a choice is a decision I if I could invest in anything and we just know we launched vodka. Yeah. I wish we had put it in big tobacco. Well, no, nicotine. Is nicotine. it not the same? No, because there's no tobacco. Nicotine is the chemical that you had traditionally had when you smoked or 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 did tobacco in any Shameless. way. What window liquors do these guys look like now? Yeah. That they were selling cancer when you could just get it clean. I and love it. Here's the thing. It's Shameless. This is not you, an ad. This is not no, an no, ad. No. By the way, this is organic. You know we love nicotine. I've been. This is not an ad. Yeah, sure. 
Imagine believing, bro. Look at that face. This is no, not no, no, no. I'm telling you the truth. Look at that face. Would you believe anything that comes out of that guy's mouth? I promise. I didn't have that many drinks. I only had two. I promise. I only had two beers. By the way, this is organic. You know we love nicotine. I've been living with just shots of nicotine. Here's the thing. Somebody told me, they're like, oh, yeah, but, you know, if you if you have these, like, uh, what are you nicotine pouches there's still some side effects and I'm like my side effects are that life is great I take big shits that's awesome I take big shits I love being on Instagram you focus I've I love doing it with more. the podcast I haven't even started mine I'm about to take one okay so again we have Tom imagine how but can you imagine how much these big tobacco sorry can you imagine how much these big tobacco companies are paying that they've got all of these podcasters on strings They've legitimately infiltrated it. Like, it's like um, Liquid Death. Liquid Death must have been actually cutting blank checks. Let Hey, write your, you know, you write your own amount. What do you want us to pay you? They must have given these podcasters blank checks back in the day because Liquid Death just appeared out of nowhere on everyone's fucking pod. So they must have been paying real well because these guys, they don't advertise anything for free. There is no fucking, you know, promo code thing. Nah, they want a flat fee. And they want a fucking percentage of the fucking commission. So imagine how much these big tobacco companies must have been paying them to infiltrate every pod so heavy handedly to the point where these guys are willing to do five to 10 minutes of promo of Zin at the start of their fucking pod. Start of it. Right at the start. Prime, you know, advertising space. They must be backing up the fucking Brinks truck. Ding, ding, ding into their literal living rooms, pouring out bucket loads of cash on the table. God damn. Tom and Bert having an organic discussion about nicotine pouches just because they personally love them. As Bert said, they are not sponsored. They're just talking about something they both love. But then Bert came up with an interesting analogy for why he prefers Lucy's new product called Breakers instead of his beloved Zin pouches. Oh, and you know how he said they weren't sponsored? Yeah, he lied. They are sponsored. Can I tell you what's crazy? What? Is like, there are dudes I follow. I wish I could name all of them, but that are big Zen guys. Yeah. And I here's the thing with Zen, and I mean this with love. Yeah. Zen's the f***ing homecoming queen that doesn't let you f*** her. Right. Which is, she's kind of, I mean, the truth is like, she's pretty. Yeah. But like, if she's you don't, pretty. She's beautiful. Yeah. Everyone looks at her. Everyone, looks Everyone at her. knows her. But if you don't get to like get a whiff, even if you date her, you can't finger her because she's like, yeah, I'm Zen. Yeah. Can I tell you what I love about Lucy? Is there's two fingers in her. Like Lu she's Lucy. Lucy's like more, more. And, and by the, the way, by the way, this might be a sponsor because they sent us this fucking box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this box made my dick harder than anything in I the know, world. I know because there's so many flavors, and they these geniuses came up with the like the, the crack. breakers. Okay, so a couple of things to point out here. The first thing is this whole discussion was the beginning of the podcast. It was the very first segment. So including the ad reads at the beginning and the whole first segment itself, they still haven't started the actual Jesus podcast. Christ. It's all still promotion at this point. Zin the second promo. thing is, and I've covered this before, if a company sends you a box of their product, that is classified as a sponsorship and you have to declare it in the video, oh. in the description, and anytime you mention the product in the podcast. So Bert did mention that they received the box from Lucy, which is at least a start. But there's an even bigger problem here, and this is the important part that most people don't know about. 10 days ago, the FDA issued 119 warning letters and filed 41 civil money penalty complaints against retailers who were selling Zin nicotine products between October 2023 wow. and February 2024, as well as issuing warning letters to three online retailers for selling unauthorized Zin nicotine pouches. See, even though nicotine pouches don't contain any tobacco products in them, they're still classified as tobacco products by the FDA Why? and therefore regulated as such. Now, listen to this, straight from the FDA, word for word. It is illegal for a retailer to sell any tobacco product, including cigarettes, e-cigarettes, cigars, and nicotine pouches, to anyone under 21. This federal minimum age of sale applies to all retail establishments and persons with no exceptions. In order for a new tobacco product to be legally marketed in the US, it must receive authorization from FDA. To date, 
FDA has authorized four oral tobacco products that have met the necessary standard. As of April 2024, the FDA wow. has not authorized any Zin product for sale in the United States. Let me give you that last bit again. As of April 24, the FDA has not authorized any Zin product for sale in the US. Okay. So Is that how they get around not being not declaring it then? Because it's not technically legal. Is that how they get around it? So they get loads of free, they get free boxes of Zin. They obviously get paid, you know, maybe in stocks, maybe in money, who knows allegedly. But because it's not actually approved by the FDA, they can technically not declare it. Hmm. So which four nicotine pouches has the FDA authorized for sale in the US? Verve Discs Blue Mint, Green Mint, Verve Chews Blue Mint, and Green Mint. So no Zins, no Rogues, and no Lucy's, only Verve. And who owns Verve? Altria does, who bought them in 2019 from a Swiss tobacco company. Who also and that's owns? the same company that owns Philip Morris International, wow. which owns Zin. Now, let me just clarify this so I don't get a bunch of letters from all these companies. This doesn't mean that it's illegal to sell nicotine patches in the US. That's not what the FDA is saying. What they are saying is it's illegal to sell those products to people under 21. And if you want to market these products in any way, then you must have FDA authorization. So I'm not suggesting that any of these companies are doing anything illegal. That is crazy. As for Tom and Bert, though, hmm, that's a different question. Mm. I was f***ing Leanne the other night, yeah, and I said, and and I was like, and I f***ing threw a breaker in. <laughs> in and the middle, of I sex? call them breakers. I just call them breakers. Well, it says breakers on it. Yeah, and I, no, but I, I don't even call them Lucy's. I call them breakers. Yeah, and she goes, uh, "What do you? What did you just do?" And I said, "I put a breaker in." Yeah, made it come. Oh Jesus! Can I tell you what I also love about Lucy? Once again, not a sponsor, kind of a sponsor. I'm sure. I maybe. I'm sure after they hear this, they're going to be a sponsor. Mm. That's the best feeling. I break it in my back teeth. I you never do? broke it in my front teeth. Oh, the front teeth is such the move. All right. Kind of reminds me of nail biting, which is such a thrill. They have a spinal tap thing about them where they're like, we go to 11. The other thing that these motherfuckers do is they give. If you have money, you can get these guys enthusiastic about anything, innit? They're actually like, come, like, imagine how lame and how boring these guys' lives are that they're in their early 50s and they're literally coming at the thought of like being paid by these fucking tobacco companies to promote this fucking shit. This is literally getting them excited. It's not even like some sponsors, some people get sponsored, just go through the motions, okay, whatever. They just promote it, just kind of get out of the way. They legitimately are talking about this with some level of, comf you know, enthusiasm because they're probably getting paid well. And it's generally giving them a thrill because it's what, naughty, it's dangerous. It's like, bruh, come on, man. Give you a in like trash bin yeah none of the other guys do that can i tell you what i miss about zen anyway. is all the secret places i put them when i'm done what do you mean oh underneath this table oh god you just it's trash them littered there? with zins Ugh. my favorite thing to do is can you make note of that please one of my favorite things to do is um i put them in the in the in the side of a couch i, I love tom 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 telling one of the paws to pick up all fucking Burt's Zin pouches on the floor. You fucking love that, innit? Put them anywhere. Like, when I'm done, I just want to hide them. All right, Bert, you are so gross. Yeah, exactly, Assad. They're 50 talking about nic nicotine like it's fucking MDMA. Exactly. Such fucking losers, man. Reminder that these people are supposed to be comedians. When has Bert ever been funny on these podcasts? It's just an endless grift. And for Bert, it's just public therapy. Exactly, Wingus McDingus. Exactly, yeah, it's just... Exactly. It's just group therapy. Um, what's that thing called? Crowdsource therapy, which he doesn't listen to, which is annoying. Right? Everyone knows that person who always asking you for fucking advice. You give it. They don't, don't get me wrong. You're not telling them to fucking follow your advice, but you just go back to doing the thing that got them in trouble or that fucked them over in the first place. Um, and then, yeah, just the sitting down and talking about nicotine pouches really seriously. There's no, you know, you're getting nothing out of this as a fan. There's no funny story at the end. Nothing. It's just them rabbiting on and on about fucking nicotine pouches. Like, no, thank you.
Ghost Dude. I can't believe Tom didn't realize that Bert's been sticking Zins under the desk this whole time, but in the eyes of the FDA, what Tom and Bert are doing is the same as promoting cigarettes, which is illegal. Like I said, nicotine pouches are classified as tobacco products by the FDA. Now, I've shown you guys several times how Andrew Schultz was forcing DJ academics to try a Zin and then lied to him by saying they're not addictive, which is completely false. But Bert took that narrative to a whole new level. And this, in my opinion, is 100% illegal. I love that in the instructions you, 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 of how to do you it. Feel it. You feel it hit your bloodstream. And then you're like, okay, yeah, no, I'm ready. I love having an addiction. Yeah. Whoa. I love addictions. They're so cool. Like Whoa. until they get too bad. Yeah, yeah. But like if you can shake it, you can't get I got like I gotta be honest with you, man. I'm on a bender right now. Yeah. I haven't done a bender in a while. How's it feel? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it, it feels does. so good. It feels so good to be out of I haven't done a bender in a while. Isn't his whole life a bender? Isn't that his whole brand? Is he mentioning bender because there's a product gonna come out called Burt's Benders or something? Is that what gonna be the tour? The new tour name, Let's Get Ben. And it's going to be him in like Speedos walking out of a fucking swimming pool. Okay, guys. <laughs> like, is that what he's doing? Like, what the fuck is this? I haven't been on the bender. Isn't he like, ugh. Tom must like silently despise him, innit? Quietly. I think Tom, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think Tom talks well about Bert to his wife. I don't think he does. He must look at him like, fucking hell, man. Part of him must be, must be because every ugh, I don't know, like control, really, but in control. Like you go, I'm gonna be able to controlled walk. chaos. I love it. I love it. We we were drinking earlier today, yeah. doing a podcast. Drank last night, uh, and it, I feel amazing. Like I feel amazing. Like <laughs> like less like. Can I tell you what it is? Yeah. Is I don't hate myself. When you're... When I'm on a bender, yeah. I don't hate myself. I hate myself the next morning. Wow. And that's the thing I don't like. But like, I love... Like... This is alcohol. Oh my God, bro. How do you feel if you're his daughter? This is such sad conversation. I hate like... God damn it, bro. Why are you so sad? Why are you so pathetic? What is this? <sighs> I feel like so there's immediate. something deeper if you explore what you just said. Okay. You know what I mean? When I'm on a bender, I don't hate myself, but I hate myself the next day. Yeah. You don't <laughs> think that's a revealing statement? No. Really? It's nice to disappear. So Bert's straight up promoting... <laughs> It's nice to disappear. What the fuck is he talking about? Oh my fucking God. That was a brilliant fucking redacted exchange. Wow. Promoting addiction. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Not only is he promoting a product illegally, he's promoting its most dangerous feature, which is why they have a massive warning label across the front. He's supposed to be saying, I like these, but beware, they're addictive. Instead, he's saying, I exactly. like these because they're addictive. addictive. Exactly. The guy is straight up dead inside, and even Fuck Tom was calling him out and trying to help him realize how far gone he is. Imagine that. Tom Segura trying to talk sense into someone. But then Bert kept leaning into it and tried to get his producers involved, which didn't quite work out for him. Do you think everyone wakes up and goes like, I, no one likes me? No, I don't think everyone feels that way. I wake up sometimes going, no one likes me. No one has a reason to like me. I don't like me. Like, I, I, I wake up in my head sometimes. Oh, I don't think it's oh my God, bro. You have to be so exhausted. He has these epiphanies, these conversations with himself every single fucking day. Enough, bro. Enough. We don't care. You don't care, obviously, because you're not making an effort to change. Leave us alone, for goodness sake. Leave us alone. Abnormal, I think... That is a common thing. But I I'm, I'm saying, not going to ask you. You're dead inside. Let the booth, everyone in the booth, do you wake up and go, no one likes me. I don't have a reason to like me. I don't wake up like that. No. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Everyone's looking at him like, no, you fucking overprivileged cunt. You fucking spoiled bitch. Sometimes. 
Sometimes because yeah. you're an artist, Zola's dead inside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, any, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't even hear any speak. Copy that. <laughs> any, please chime in. Uh, I mean, I was just gonna say, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do, but it's not any different than like when I go to bed or any other time. Yeah, I just feel like that, but that's not like a bad thing to me. I just feel do like you feel normal. like, do you feel like, do you ever feel any, do you ever feel like you're wasting your life? Um, working on this podcast, yeah, working at your mom's house studios, probably. He's probably thinking he should be with fucking Nadal, raking in all that fucking Patreon money. <laughs> Do I feel like I'm wasting my? <laughs> the producers, oh my god, the producers of your mum's house, all nodding. Oh my god, what a brilliant clip! Look at them all nodding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you ever wake up and go, "What am I fucking doing anyway? Like, what am I doing?" Because I I feel like that sometimes, and that's. One of the reasons, one of the things that alcohol cures is you go, hey, man, it's all good. It, it really takes the fucking hum out of the fucking speakers. But wait speakers. a minute. Don't you st- what the fuck, bro? Okay, now I get what fucking Podcast Cream is saying. This is insane. They're promoting Zins and all this addictive shit. And this guy is like, the what, this also explains, oh, my God, big up the stream chat. Do you guys remember when I was asking you guys, oh, how come Brent, how, sorry, how come Bert hasn't been sponsored by like, um, why why hasn't he been sponsored by like a liquor company before, right? Let's say like Tito's or something. I remember you guys saying that, oh, like, you know, alcohol companies don't like to sponsor or endorse people who are obviously addicts or obviously alcoholics or obviously are a bit far gone. It's not good for their image. Even though they're obviously making booze, which is bad in itself, they don't want to market it or be associated with somebody that could eventually, you know, end up toppling over while they're fucking holding their fucking bottle of drink in their hand. That's going to be bad for PR. So this explains it. Why he hasn't been able, even though he's a consummate drinker, talks about drinking every single day, hasn't been able to secure a fucking drink, you know, a liquor sponsor because he's legitimately an alcoholic. He legitimately has issues. And he's, you know, forcing us to all listen. This is the thing I don't like about Bert. He forces us to listen and to give a shit about his issues when he doesn't really give a shit about him enough to himself to change. Not to change for his kids. Like, he hasn't even got any, even one of those inflection points. Oh, yeah, my kids are going to school. I don't want my kids to see me as a hungover dad. My kids are going to college. I don't want them to see me as a hungover dad. Like, there is no inflection. There's no, none of those, like, come to Jesus moments that regular dudes have. Okay, my kids are growing up now. I want them to see me in their 20s as, like, this guy. Nah, he's just the same guy. Just drink, like, he's lucky he comes from a rich family. If not, he'd be fucked, bro. Or oh, he's lucky he has a really good career because, God damn it, bro. Don't you feel like that that is just a fleeting thing that al- alcohol is providing in that moment? Yeah. Because it doesn't actually cure. No, it doesn't cure it, but it feels so good. Oh, okay. So it's like it feels the, so good. The band aid feels good. Listen, Andy, I didn't hear your answer. I'm so sorry. Jesus Christ. Alcohol is a hell of a drug. Sad stuff. <sighs> The saddest bit about alcohol, and I realized it the other day, big up a um, horror movie, A Hustle. I was, um, I went to a Lidl. Lidl is one of our shops here, right? Similar to Audi. And I went to go buy some shit. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let me get some beers. And I went to the beer section because I never usually buy beer because it usually makes me shit super hard. But I thought, you know what? Let me just check the Lidl section for beer. <laughs> and that's what, I don't know why it struck me at that time. Maybe because you get older, you start to notice these things. I was in the beer section of Lidl and I saw they were selling four cans of beer in Lidl. Four cans of beer for £3.50. You can't even buy bread, some well, a nice v- brand of bread for £3.50. But you can buy four tins of beer for £3.50 in Lidl. No wonder people get addicted to alcohol. No wonder people become alcoholics. No wonder. Three fifty. Fuck! You can buy like a liter bottle of vodka for ten pounds. You could probably buy more alcohol per liter than you could buy as a vo- as grams in terms of food. Probably, if you wanted to. 
Oh yeah, big up uh, the Hectic Channel. What's good, the Hectic Channel? Hope you're well, my friend. Long time no see. What's good, the Hectic Channel? Well, at least Bert isn't an abusive alcoholic. That's probably a positive. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's actually a really good point. Maybe he's abusive with his be behavior. That's probably destructive. But yeah, at least he's not abusive. He doesn't seem like he's an annoying drunk either, which is a weird one because he seems... An he's actually... He actually seems more annoying sober than he does drunk. <laughs> You know, that's a weird thing because on the pods, I never really see him drunk on the pods. I think he might be resting a hangover, but he doesn't really record drunk, really. So he doesn't seem like an annoying drunk. So that's that helps him in that regard. But fuck, bro. This guy's a mess. I don't like interrupting people. Go ahead. Uh, no, that's good, man. I, I was going to say, um, I, I only know what I'm doing because I'm trying to buy my mom a house at some point. So that's really my goal in, in my life. So the closer I get to that, then you know wow all right any and he's a bit of a misery guts isn't it fucking hell he's going through some sh this is the one time they've actually spoken to him i bet in the whole time he's been hired there they probably don't even actually speak to him <laughs> so they realizing this that's probably why that guy in the back was, was like shaking his head because they actually all speak right producers you know i'm assuming it's a fucking fraternity or fraternity as brandon would say but fuck Anyway, it's a commendable goal, to be fair. Having a goal to buy your member house is really sick, to be fair. That's, that should be, that's every black person, immigrant, minority person's goal, right? To buy your parents a house because, you know, you know what they kind of did to get you here in the country, the sacrifices they made, and the least you can do if you can afford to, if you have the means to, is to buy them a house just to kind of as a thank you, like, here, now you don't have to worry about rent. Now you don't have to worry about all these things. you got your own crib. But... Yeah, let's see what Bert says. A man that's born in the lap, lap of privilege and luxury. A man that was able to go to... Didn't Bert stay in college for like four years or something? Didn't he do like four more years in college than he, than he was meant to do? Or something. I, I swear to God, that was. I think that's part of the law, that he was stayed in college for like four years. So let's see what Bert says. That's where I'm at. But if, if, as soon as I do that, so yeah. Cool. I mean, what the f*** am I doing after that? How know. much money do you need to start a GoFundMe for your mom's no, house? No, we no. will not fuck do that. No. No. I'm going to end up having to pay for it. I know <laughs> how f***ing charities work. But that's an awesome goal to have. That's an awesome. Yeah, thanks for fucking cheap. Thanks for like, look at Tom giving him that look like, really? When people are, honestly, what a prick. Some goal, Annie. And that's, that's good to have some goal. Thanks, and yeah. that, and I think sometimes if you have purpose, you can find the thing in your life. Of course, Bert had to make Annie's goal about himself. I'm going to end up paying for your mom's house. Everything always turns full circle back to Bert. And you could probably tell there that the producers are sick of Bert. We all know what happened with Nadav leaving YMH to do his own thing, which seems to be working out for him. But Bert is so delusional that his producers aren't afraid to call him out anymore. Like I keep saying, the whole Two Bears podcast is just dead now. I have a new bit I'm working on that I can't, I haven't figured out. I think you saw it. Uh, and it's like, if you're not challenging yourself to do something different, yeah. what are you doing in life? I think this goes back to any buying a house for his mom. Okay. If you're not, if you don't have a thing you're going for, this is like not a self-help podcast, but like. You, you should never, ever, 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 ever in life take advice on someone like a bird. He's been afforded every advantage, every privilege in the book, more so than regular people. He's been able to make it in spite of his shortcomings, in spite of his, you know, limited fucking intelligence, in spite of his mistakes. He's been able to just kind of keep, you know, stumbling through life. That's probably not the right person to kind of get advice from because he's been so quote unquote lucky in other areas of his life that he had no part in playing, especially in, you know, winning the lottery in terms of being born in a particular family that's able to support you that's able to put you through college that's able to fund your lifestyle while you're trying to become a comedian that's able to fucking allow you to you know not have a job for a while while you sort yourself out and go on auditions like all that stuff is not normal so really and truly this sort of stuff this sort of advice is like oh go for your dreams it's like mm, i have a kid you know go for your dreams i i had a kid when uh, it's like someone saying i had a kid when i was 17 <laughs> you know i don't have the privilege to go for my dreams i have bills to pay <laughs> my kid wants a bike that's what i'm aiming for i'm aiming to buy my kid a fucking bike my kid's controller broke and i just have just about have enough money to fucking pay the bills and now he's looking at me with those big 
you know, beautiful eyes, expecting his daddy to buy him a controller. And I don't feel like a man. I don't feel like I'm responsible for my children and my family because I can't buy my kid a twenty nine ninety nine fucking, you know, controller. This is not the time for me to go and chase my dreams. I have things to fucking worry about. You know what I mean? I just broke my leg and now I know I can't afford to get the surgery, but I need to get it done because I can't go back to work. If I can't go back to work and I can't fucking work and I can't earn money, I hear these comedians telling you how to be inspired by them. The cheek, the fucking goal. Find your thing you're going for. Yeah, you have to have goals, you challenges. Know, you know my buddy, Tom Hayslip? Do I know him? Yeah, Asian dude. Yeah. Makes all the movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I keep his name in because it's important for this story. I was like, I wish I could be more like you. And he really quickly assessed me and he said, your problem is you're spending too many plates. You don't have any goals. You're just, you're just like, I want this. I want all of it. He goes, find your goals. He goes like, he, he, very quick. Spinning too many plates. What, like just drinking a bunch and recording it? But he goes, I wanted a house in uh, Atlanta because I was making a movie there. So I just thought, how do I get that house in Atlanta? I know I got to make this much money. I know how I make this much money. He goes, my goals are very simple. It's a beautiful thing in life is that if your life's a little more simple, like Tom, <laughs> this is kind of like an insult it's kind of like a diss in it he's kind of dissing the guy no simple goals like wanting to own their home that's a simple goal that's not a big deal for some people what <laughs> isn't that kind of a diss a simple so what what's complex about your life tom but why why is your life so complex why is that so different what do you do you can find your goals and achieve them and go like any said i want to buy a house for my mom that, that's so beautiful as opposed to someone like um I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of a name like joe list mark norman who or sam morell who want to be like movie stars or i don't know what they want you know what i mean but like their goals sometimes can be way too big yeah and then you can't focus on that goal because it's out of your reach you can't like attain it wow if you're a a, a regular person and you can find small goals <laughs> we're small people with small brains and small goals like wanting to buy a house for ourselves regular people are small people with small goals what the fuck is he saying you see this is what this is what i mean about these guys i think they all feel like this let's not give bert too much too much crack I think they all feel like this. I think all comedians look at the audience, the fan base, as lower than them. They think they're better than us, which is weird because they depend on working class, middle class people to pay them in order for them to live this life of luxury they live. That's so funny. Don't you think that's funny? The majority of comedians, I think their fan bases are made of working class, middle class people. But they look down on us because we have regular jobs. They think we're like all stuck in prison. We're all stuck working in the cotton fields, in the fucking mines. That's what they think when we fucking work jobs. Like, I could never do that. That's like a hell. It's like, mm, it's just a job, man. And some of us are lucky to have jobs that we do actually don't mind. It's good to get out of the house. You know, we feel like we have a purpose. We studied for this in school. You know, like some of us don't actually mind having jobs. It's not that bad. <laughs> These guys are making it sound like, you know, we are literally in the slave trade. It's like, bruh. <laughs> the funny thing is, these guys are probably way more you would describe as slaves because if the fans walk away, they have to do whatever it takes to get them back. They have to be like a gesture, like doing backflips and doing all these sort of stunts to get the fan back on fucking side again. So they're, you know, their careers are very much dependent on their ability to keep an audience. And once that audience goes, they're fucking fucked. <sighs> they're attainable. And then your life gets so much happier. Well, yeah. I mean, what you're talking about is just Yeah, big up horror, horror movie hustle. I have to watch it, though. I, my Patreon, I'm fucking abandoning it and I'm not taking care of it. I'm going to fucking update it. But I want to fucking do a live reaction of watching that movie on my Patreon anyway. I have to do it. It's just one of the things I have to do. You can't talk about comedy podcasts like I do and not watch that. You have to watch it. It's it's part. I think it's a necessary requirement. If you sit on here like I do and talk about these guys, 
you have to, you know, you have to watch Gringo Happy, you have to watch You Be Surprised, and you have to watch The Machine. I think it's necessary viewing. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to have to put my episode through it. It's probably going to be hell, but I'm going to have to watch it. Just having... What did I say? What did I say? Well... I, up, I heard them laugh. Go ahead. Uh, it's just, it's funny you're saying buying a house is a small goal. <laughs> That's kind of huge to me, man. No, it's a big goal. It's a big goal, but it's not for everyone, right? Yeah, sure. No. No. Oh. Yo, the back room are talking back to them. This podcast is going to be on the ropes, isn't it? I think Nadav leaving was the biggest sign that there's something very... Some people suggested Nadav left because of that other kid that was in Sopranos. He was like bullying him a bit and he didn't like it. And the environment is a bit strange. But it's now seeming likely that it's just a working environment and being around these type of guys. Just after a while, it's just it's, it's exhausting. It's hard to take. Imagine having to listen to burst illusions and burst very warped perception of the real world, of the real world, 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 of the real world. Imagine. It's just too much to handle. Fuck, bro. Buying a house for your mum is a small goal. Being a movie star, now that's the big role. Wanting to sell out M M S MGM, whatever, Manson Square Garden, that's the goal. Wanting to get special on Netflix, that's a commendable goal. Anything else doesn't count buying them on my house who gives a fuck i can buy 10 houses right now <laughs> no no but no buying a house for your mom is a mm. big goal that's it's a, a huge. Sec, that's a second goal like that's like buying a house is a big goal well, i remember how hard it was to buy a house i remember thinking how hard it was to buy you look at the phrasing i remember how hard it was to buy a house why because you had to like sit down and like sign papers because you had to go to house viewings not because you didn't have the money <laughs> That's the main thing that most of us struggle with. Where am I going to get the money to afford this thing that I want? His main probably hassle was sitting down, having to photocopy things, having to email things, sign documents, send through fucking ID, proof of address. That's what probably affected him mostly. Where to find a house in the first place. Not the fact that the money was always there. Okay, I can buy the thing, but it's like, I have to do all these things. Take time off from stand up to go and fucking sort out the house. How do people have houses? I remember going to people's houses and going, How did you get a house? Yeah. This is crazy. For us, it happens different. You have to realize we're talking in a in a in a rarefied air of like all of a sudden one day we make money. We we you don't make no money and Oh no, I think I think we know that. Big up uh, King Bayo. Bro, we all know the wife did all the work, found a house and everything. No, I think they said that. I think they said that. The, all the houses. I think they moved into a second house. The one that they were in before where Bert used to film the Bert cast, that's now another one. The one where it's in his new studio, that's a new house. So they've got definitely got a new house now. And I think they've mentioned it. I think when I used to listen to them, or I went to listen to the Bert cast, in the beginning, there'd always be a segment where he's talking to his wife before the guest comes on. And they admitted, yeah, the wife does all that shit. Like, she actually enjoys it, I guess, but because I guess it gives, gives her something to do. But yeah, it was pretty clear that she's the one that sorted that shit out. She got everything signed, moved things. He just sort of turned up. He just kind of showed up and everything was done. It was like a party, birthday party. Oh yeah, it's my birthday. Thank you. God damn it, bro. God damn it. Buying a house is a small goal. I love these guys. And then one day you make money. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can buy a house now. Yeah. So like we don't have, we. it's hard for us to relate to like, the everyday earning a paycheck because we don't have that. We make five hundred dollars for as a as a host for a weekend. Yeah. Seven hundred dollars as a feature. Fifteen hundred dollars as a headliner, and then one day you pop and you make a million dollars, and you're like, Fuck, "I guess I can buy a house." Right. Like I don't understand. I never understood how anyone bought a house. Like that blew me away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. He's just talking too much. He doesn't realize how mad he sounds, how insanely detached from reality he sounds. But again, no surprise, isn't it? Rich guy shit, um, privilege shit. Like, that's the thing, actually, to give these guys credit. They're really good at this, by the way. Like, how did they manage to portray this image of being like the regular guy while also being not the regular guy? Tom Segura's dad, like, super accomplished gentleman served his country came back i think he worked for me maya lynch right 
like inc- like really incredible fucking CV. Bert's dad, same thing as well. I think he was a solicitor, a lawyer or something along those kind of lines, but made a lot of money. They grew up in pr- in the lap of privilege. They all went to good schools, even though, you know, they were all dumb. Um, I think even his sister, I think she's a bit, I think Bert's sister or Tom's sister is a little bit ditzy and crashes all her cars and drinks all the time. It just doesn't have even have a job. So it's interesting how they were able to both portray images of being a regular guy, maybe because of fat and had beards. But it, that's the skill that I think comedians don't get enough props for, especially some of the privileged ones. They have an ability to like appear to be regular dudes when they're not regular dudes at all. Can someone honestly explain to me exactly what the actual fuck Bert was talking about there? Exactly. Seriously, the guy's on another planet. He's never had to pay for anything in his life. Exactly. For those of you who don't know, Bert's dad owned his own successful law firm, which is why he was able to put Bert through college for seven years and not college for seven years. And look at that guy. Just a life. How does a lifelong alcoholic end up with a woman like that? Like, she's actually pretty well-to-do. Like, she's not a reflection of him. Like, she looks like she showers. She looks like she gets her nails done. She washes her hair. She puts on a bit of makeup on, the, on you know, a bit of lip, a little lip, a little, little bit of pop on the lips for the weekend or, you know, whatever. Takes care of herself. Isn't overly fat. Seems quite funny. Like, how does somebody that like that end up with someone like that? How is that possible? She's smart because obviously your life is set for life. You're set for life in that regard. And if you ever do get divorced, she's going to get a fucking fat settlement. But how did how did that happen? <laughs> it's pretty wild. But she's they're perfect for each other though because, you know, she provides him with that safety and that whatever. But it's so wild how weirdly different they are. But then I guess that's probably the best. That's why I like actually about relationships. I think the more different you are, the better it is. The more you can complement each other's positives and negatives. I think when you're too similar, it's a bit annoying. But yeah, wow. She has a plan and a goal. Exactly, 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 exactly. It's a good life though to be a Leon Kreischer. Your kids are now teenagers. You get the house to yourself. You get a trainer that, you know, put make sure that you can fit into all your nice dresses and jeans. You get to drive nice cars. Go on little trips with your girlfriends. Not a bad life, to be fair. You don't get to hang out with your husband too much because he's either on the road or nursing a hangover or smelling like piss. But you get to live a life where, you know, nice jewellery, nice clothes, decent car. Not decent, decent, more than decent cars. A lovely house you can kind of, you know, dote over. Not too bad of a life. Not only that, his wife Leanne used to get free rent in the apartment building above the place that she used to work at when they first got married. And why on earth is he talking about setting goals to buy houses? I thought this was a comedy podcast. I think I have purpose, but I just know that like, I know that- Bert's purpose is to prove to you that you can do whatever you put your mind to because this guy is a legit redact, functioning alcoholic. He's been given all the privileges in life and made tons of mistakes and he's still be able to make it. So if you can dial back some of the mistakes, learn from his mistakes and pursue what you want to pursue, you can probably make it too. It's going to take a bunch of money, a bunch of time, but it's possible. That's their purpose of people like this. I don't think it's the purpose to kind of, you know, look at them as, a, as like a goal to emulate, but more so as like a cautionary tale and just a sign that, okay, it's possible. A human has done it because, you know, He's not very funny either. So it's like, hey, if you can set out arenas, so can you. This is the f-ed up thing. And I, I hope this lands with everyone. But like, the joy of sobriety takes a minute. It, it's not immediate. Like, what? You, you've you never been sober though. How do you know? If you quit drinking, if I quit drinking tonight, mm-hmm. like I have to quit drinking, tonight will be my last drink when we get on the bus. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, he's like a child. He's like a who said it before in the stream chat. He's like a literal child, isn't it? He's like a literal adult child. I have to go drinking tonight in my fellow drink tonight. Um, for the week, probably for two weeks. I won't drink for two weeks. Okay. 
I know for a fact the joy doesn't show up tomorrow. I got to wait for it. The, the joy? joy? Yeah. When? How long does it take to show up? Two days. Oh. Two but days. Then, I need. I need a second day, and I will. Be, I will be smoking. Weed. But it, okay. But does? <laughs> but it's not sober. Like I I'm know. not fucking stupid. Right. I'm gonna be sober. I'm gonna uh, LA sober, I guess, isn't it? But <laughs> don't you ever feel like, like the way you say things? It's like doesn't any of this register in your brain what you're saying? Like doesn't no. it? <laughs> like, I think like, that's what's beautiful about me. Is I don't think before I speak. No, I don't mean to think before you speak. I just mean I'm listen going for to what you're saying. Another four milligrams. Yeah, do it. I love. But do you nicotine. feel like going? Why don't I extend this joy? No, I, I have. I have. Yeah. But I like the. I like the spark. Yeah, the spark. Yeah, it's obvious that Tom's had enough. He can tell that Bert's going too far now, and it's affecting their numbers. Like I said at the beginning, all you have to do is read the comment section to see how many people are just hate watching at this point. And by the end, Bert was pretty trashed from all the poor osos he had been drinking throughout the episode. He also mentioned they'd recorded another podcast earlier that day because. Don't you find it funny that Tom doesn't drink poor osos? Well, it's not funny because he never was a drinker. If you listen to your mum's house from early, you would know Tom has never been a big drinker. He was always a big food guy, hence why he was super fat. But he always said he was a bit of a lightweight. He actually never liked hangovers. He liked to sleep in early, to get up early. Like he actually detested, like he he's kind of like a bit like Bill Burr in that regard. Like he hates hanging around people that are drinking. He hates people being close to him and touching him, all that shit. So for them to like come out with the vodka when they're 50 and pretend they're party guys, Tom literally hates people. That's like a running meme. He hates like people. So now he's what? The guy that's going to buy you a shot. <laughs> he's the guy that's going to be taking off his shirt now. He's got his arm around strangers at the bar buying drinks. That is, the, that is one of the worst grips I've ever seen. If you're a fan of these podcasts, you would know Tom doesn't drink. One of the worst griffs you've ever fucking seen. Exactly. Exactly the hectic. Exactly the hectic Chanel. Exactly the Roxel shampoo. Exactly. It's like, what? <laughs> you don't even have any fucking air. Oh, fucking love it. As most of you will now know, they bank episodes and release them slowly. That's why Tom's wearing that same yellow shirt in so many episodes and they have nothing to talk about. But that didn't stop Bert from trying to cry. And just like when he tried to crap himself on camera that time, he just couldn't quite get it out. And they, I was a bad dad. It. I was a bad dad. You were a bad dad? Yeah. What I do you mean? I was a bad dad. I, I was obsessed with baseball and softball. Cause I, and, I, and my daughters had beautiful swings. Beautiful swings. Beautiful swings. They had beautiful swings. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and Georgia quit softball. Yeah. And it me up and i it was the beginning of the end of like our first like of the daddy daughter fun times yeah that was the very beginning of the end of it we we re, we rebuilt it but that was i can tell you where i was on the street i can tell you what street i was on when it started i can tell you when that fight started and that was the beginning of the end leanne can tell you what street it was too it was in front of a 7-eleven and i can melt it down because they wanted to give up softball and it me up because I was like, yo, this is what you do. This is what we do. I couldn't be that guy that I, I just couldn't. I, I f it up. I f it up. So Bert doesn't have any trouble crying when he's talking about his own funeral and how he hopes everyone will miss him. But talking about his daughters just can't quite get him there. That tells you every. <laughs> That's a good point. That's such a good point. <laughs> he cries about his own mortality and the fact that thinking whether or not people will cry at his funeral, whether or not they remember him, if they're going to be like, I wish Bert was here. But the thought of his daughter's relation, him and his daughter's relationship crumbling, he can't manage to even have a single tear. Not a single tear duck opens. Everything you need to know about him. And what makes this whole situation so weird is that Tom is doing a lot better than he was last year. 
Last year, Tom hit rock bottom. I really think that money ruined him and he needed to go through that rough patch in 2023 to realize that if he doesn't turn himself around, he's going to lose everything. And you can tell how much he's changed now. He doesn't talk about his cars and watches and how much money he's got. He's also calling out Bert all the time. But Bert's doing the exact opposite. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, he has stopped. He has purposely stopped talking about that stuff. He doesn't post about anything. Yeah. Good point. Opposite. He's clearly leaning into the cringe so he can maintain relevance. And one thing we've come to learn about Bert is that he doesn't care whether or not he gets positive or negative attention. He just wants attention. That's why Tom's got to let him go and move on. I've said this before, and I know a bunch of you disagree with me, but I want to like Tom. He used to be one of my favorite comedians, but... Yeah, he used to be one of my favorite podcasters. I don't, I'm not sure about comedy. I wasn't that fond of his stand-up, but... As a podcaster, your mum's house, like, your mum's house was fucking goated, bro. Fucking goated. And the way it's fallen off is just wild. Then the money got to him and his whole life became one big grift. If he only just focused more on his comedy and stopped trying to be Mr. Podcast Producer, he really could be one of the greats in my opinion, but he spread himself too thin across all his commitments and business interests that he's become a suit masquerading as a comedian. That's something I probably don't give Joe Rogan enough credit for. Even though he built a comedy mothership, his podcast is still mostly just him and Jamie doing their mm -hmm. thing. He hasn't tried to create a whole studio with other podcasts Good under point. his belt. He's stuck to JRE, UFC commentary, and his comedy club. So as much as I think he's lost touch with his audience as well, he's still the same guy for the most part. Anyway, for those of you who are interested, you can go and check out my Patreon. But yeah, big up podcast cringe. That was fucking brilliant very 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 well put um the end is nigh or maybe it isn't who fucking knows the end is nigh or maybe it isn't who the fuck knows man who the fuck fucking knows who the fuck fucking knows so um let's play the last one before i leave you guys i want to quickly play this chris ali has got some clips on his channel which are really funny actually there's two things i want to point out with the chris ali stuff number one have you guys noticed with Chris D'Elia? Look what he's doing now. This is pretty wild, right? Chris D'Elia is now posting the highlight clips of him on the fucking Fight Companion. It's pretty wild, isn't it? I wonder what Brendan thinks about that because the views on it are pretty good. He's got this Chris D'Elia and Brian Callen highlights from the Calabasas Fight Companion and it's got 70k views only three days ago and i think the entirety of the live stream is on a hundred thousand so it you could i could see a scenario where chris delia's and brian callen's little back-to-back -back highlight thing on his channel will end up having more views than the entire live stream that it was taken from <laughs> pretty insane isn't it pretty insane and he's also got these vlogs he does as well. These weird vlog things. So let's see the let's see the vlog things. This is one this is a Crystalia tour at the Chevre was that Chevry Port? What the fuck's a Chevry Port? Let's see this. You wanna freestyle? Give me a beat, I'll freestyle. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Who's a black guy? Who's a black guy? Who the fuck is a black guy? <laughs> Why are you starting? <laughs> oh, dude. That's good, dude. David, yo, really, what's the deal with David? Is he fat or is he skinny? He's kind of like skinny, but then you look at him certain ways and you're like, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Is he gaining some weight? Or is it like the other way around? Is it like, yo, there's a plump guy and then you look at him and you're like, wait a minute, hold up, hold up a second. Should he be a little bit thinner? Yeah, he kind of in the middle. He in the middle and that's really his problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stand up guy on ten toes. Comedy. Big body pull up in a is with some is that little girl in the beginning with the with a fucking Callan and Delia show? <laughs> How does he have this pool with little girls? Why is hey, it? Is that, up guy is that a girl ten, boy? Toe. 
I don't know, he kind of looks like um that climate change person, isn't it? I don't know if that's a girl or a boy. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, but Chris has a weird knack for finding little kids, isn't it? Strange. Big body pull up in a range road. I can change the whole game when I say so. I pull up, shut it down. Of course he's signing girls' bodies. Makes sense. Oh yeah, they know. <laughs> Running this game in a game for me. I never switched to horrible fucking I don't know what this music is. I don't know what the fuck this is. It's fucking horrible. No change in me. <laughs> I just found out they had Frosted Flakes on there, bro. Yeah, bro. Frosted Flakes one of the earliest cereals. It's you, Kellogg, isn't it? Fruit Loops. Yes. Yeah, man, what? You think they invented Fruit Loops in the last 10 years? My generation, millennials. No. So the last what? 20 years? No. 25? No. What it's type of cereal were you eating growing up? I was eating. Why does that guy sound like he's 12, but he looks like he's 38? Eating uh, Lucky Charms. No, y'all didn't have Lucky Charms. This is the this is the part of the one thousand, by the way. This is the expert level, top tier Navy Seals, Kung Fu Masters level of comedy, comedy, comedy that us civilians can't grasp. This is what we're missing out on. This is the fucking hilarious tangs that we are not allowed to take part in. Y'all didn't have the same here. Yeah, What's the did. Frosted Flakes theme song? Yeah. Great. Yeah. No. It's Tony Tiger. That's the that's okay, the it's, slogan. It's, it's, well, I obviously know it. What's the Frosted Flakes? We all love it. We're in now. Oh, Frosted Flakes. They're great. That's it. They never had Frosted Flakes. Now. And they hey, yo, black man, you gotta be ashamed, man. You're hanging around with the fucking alleged kitty diddler. That is next level. You have to be ashamed. You're, I don't know how much it's going to, what it's going to do for your career, having Chris Lee on your CV, but Godspeed to you, brother. Godspeed. The other one's called Ooky Chris. Remember that one? Yeah, I don't think y'all have ever had Frosted Flakes. You're out of your mind. We're not that old. Do you think, I, what? It's cereal has been around for a hundred. Not our cereal. Yeah, all the cereal, all the. Y'all didn't have it. Why, why are you acting like cereal is Bluetooth, dude? <laughs> you were eating raisins. Raisin bran, dude. No, you were eating straight raisins. <laughs> raisins and milk? Yes. <laughs> Chris was eating raisins and milk. And he, this motherfucker was eight years old eating raisin bran. What's wrong with you? Chris didn't have a childhood. He never had cocoa. Oat checks, oat checks. This is what he thinks we ate, like oat checks or something. You had, you had cinnamon toast crunch? Yep. The taste you can see? Yes, I had cinnamon toast crunch, yeah. Cinnamon toast crunch was not out what do you in think? the 70s. You thought we had rice crisp? I wasn't even alive in the 70s, bro. Okay. Okay. You wasn't alive? How old are you? I'm 20. I'm 23. But uh, what brought this up? Did you think about cereal? I was singing the Sam. I was like, I was singing about the Frosted Flakes thing. They're not song. good. They're great. That's what I That's, that's why I said. That's not the song, bro. And he said that's not the song. I was like this. Not gonna lie, after a flight when I land, I don't want to be debating about cereal. I'm going to put on, I'm going to put on my head. I'm the type of person. If we're going on a trip together as friends, we got to like save our conversations for the conversation. We're not going to be having conversations in the car, talking on the plane, on the way to the... Nah, do you know what I mean? I'm going to put my headphones in and I'm going to pretend I'm listening to something just so I can get some peace. I'm one of those dickheads. Like, come on, let's chill. We're all sleeping in the same house anyway. We can talk later. Like all this nonstop combo thing is fucking is exhausting after a while. Please, please, enough. Frosted Flakes are more than good no I, they're great okay, yeah all right well no i don't know that y'all had cornflakes and you yes. might have put sugar in it yeah we had corn no, pops we had frosted flakes david you had buttered biscuits I had, no i my all my friends had frosted flakes that's why i always spent the night at their house <laughs> oh you know what my favorite one was though ever and i didn't start eating it until a little bit a little bit later is clusters that was the shit dude but you know what honestly it's is always you know what honestly has always been good Cheerios, man. No, man, yeah. that's how you know you're old. Honey nut. No, honey nut. Yeah, honey nut. You, you know, you do half honey nut, half regular. Yeah, that's the way. That's and it's way. own and puppin. And it's own and puppin, God. baby. It's own and puppin. And it's own you and puppin. See what I mean? And they wonder why. If you're a kid, no kid would say, I want some Cheerios. Correct. That's how I do. That's how I do it. Because I don't like too much. Calvin loves Cheerios. Yeah. Calvin does? Uh huh. But that's because his dad yep. is a weirdo. Yeah, he, he wants some. He yeah, he's been accused of allegedly texting girls that are 16, 17, and 18. That's probably why. But unless allegedly, I don't really know. You know, I just read what's on the news. I'm a ill-educated, 
uninformed black man from the bum place in London somewhere. What do I fucking know? He wants him to be um if you introduced him mm -hmm. to the OG serials yeah, no of my era, bro. Oh, he on cocaine. You're saying the same cereals I ate. You did not have the only Cookie Crisp. How is this conversation still going? It's four minutes into this vlog. These guys don't do shit in it. Like, yes. I'd rather they just get on camera with some underage girls and start snorting coke off their tits than doing this shit. Because this is fucking horrible. Reese's Pieces, yes, the only Oreo. One that I didn't have. The only one. What is Oreo? Apple Jacks. Yeah. Oh, Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks is like the first. It's like the first cereal. Yeah, Fruity Pebbles. Yes. Oh, you know what? The one I ate the most, absolutely hands down, was Cocoa Pebbles. Man, somebody do some research. He's not sassy. That's his white man voice. The hectic childhood. No, sorry, I'm Joel from MIA. That's not him sing sassy. That's the black guy that probably you know likes the company of people like that. And that's the voice that he puts on to be non-threatening. The voice he puts on to assimilate. But also, just to have a little bit of a twang in there. So they, you know, y'all. You know, he drops a little y'all in there just so they know he's from the hood. He knows he's from South. They know he's from a, you know, he might be from the projects. From a rough part of town. But he does have that, well, that little fucking squeak in his voice to make him sound more, you know, more, um, more palatable, you know, to his, um, to his Caucasian brothers. Which is funny because... You know, just be yourself, but hey, why why be yourself when you can be this person? You tell me where these cereals out in the 70s. The 70s? I was, was born, born in 1980. By the way, if only you had something in your pocket that could help you figure out when cereal was made. I don't trust your judgment. Oh, I'm healthy. I, I got Skittles. I ate three Skittles. And my David mind. was eating catfish for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a trustworthy catfish person. Catfish out. Catfish out. <laughs> <laughs> when you wake up and it's that sweet smell of fish. And milk. Oh, mom. Oh, fuck. This tastes like goddamn fish. <laughs> Shut up, kid. Catfish O's. <laughs> mom, there's a whisker in my mouth. Shreveport, dude. It's my probably worst market of all time. Dude. Not Big Dave back. It's been been quite some time since Dave has made an appearance. He done lost some weight. He been acting different. Mm -hmm. Dave, tell him about that tape for you. I, it was it was surgically put in, so it was, it was nice and clean. They did it the right way. Yeah, yeah. The worms having a, a had a blast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "Oh shit, more!" I don't know. The worms came out looking as they were David size. <laughs> you have a movie in South by Southwest now? Yeah, it's called Blue. B L E W. It's about guys. Oh, super. Is it a is it an LGBTQ film? Uh, I don't believe in labels, but yeah. Did you blow a guy in the movie? No. Oh. Uh, my character blows a lot of guys in the movie. Is it, so this is your dream role? No, it's... Okay, so it's this stand-up comedian that is killing it, and he goes on tour a lot, and he sucks to lots of guys' dicks. Oh. Who wrote it? Uh, me and this guy. Me and this... Me and this guy uh, that I barely know. Wow. I can't wait to see it, man. I'm really excited. Comedy. Blue. It's coming to a theater near you, maybe. I mean, it's going to be critically acclaimed for sure. But speaking of blue, I farted. You just parked. So go where you just parked. So, because that's where it is. I think it's on. You have one car. Is it on fourth floor? That was on the third. Oh, uh, we already went to the fourth floor and came down because you thought it was in the south. Uh, dude, I have an idea. I'll have an idea like I'll do what Calvin does. I have an idea. Let's only go to the place that you went that you parked. The first time I know I parked on the second floor. Oh well, that doesn't help. And then the second time. So we're going over there. It's definitely not two. I just said I'm picking you guys up out front. Didn't I say that? Huh. I wonder why it's not making noise. <laughs> I bet you don't even know what car it is, honestly. Oh, unlock it. Unlock it. Unbelievable, dude. You know, not even close to where you thought it was. Why <laughs> oh, you look like such a bitch running down into it? <laughs> what time is it? There's always a moment where Chris has to come out topless in one of these videos, isn't it? 
This is his call to action for all the young ladies out there, allegedly. This is Chris's call to action. He always has to, there always has to be an apropos moment where Chris takes off his t-shirt. Has to be. Or takes off his trousers. It just has to exist. There doesn't never exist an opportunity for him to get in front of the camera and say, hey, remember me? I've got my top off. I've got my top off. You want to feel this white pasted skin on top of you? Huh? I woke up before you. No. And before Sam. I don't think you did. I woke up before you go. This city's mine. <laughs> Boomtown shall be mine. <laughs> oh, Shreveport shall be mine. <laughs> Shreveport shall be mine. Dude, if an evil villain did that in a movie like that, it would be so good. Why don't they do it like that? God damn, I need to be back in Hollywood, man. You want a photo like that? Never yes. It's so many different levels. You've never taken a picture like this of us. And that sucks, dude. Because that is awesome. This is... This guy is utterly the shit. And these guys are cool too, but it's just layers, this photo. We gotta take a photo like this. They're perfect. Why am I hurting her? Dude, look at this guy's outfit. It's kind of ill. It, it's so... This is the illest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Which one's David? <laughs> no. Honor the gift is hilarious. Honor the gift on the t-shirt. <laughs> He's probably giving some people some gifts, maybe without their consent, maybe without their approval, maybe without their knowledge. Honor the gift, lols. He just said in the background, it's a good looking one, obviously. Of course, black guy. Look at look at black guy now doing his black guy role. Hey, I'm dancing. I'm singing this old hip hop song. Remember this R and B song? Maybe remember this viral dance? Fucking hell, bro. I don't want to call him a coon, but God almighty. <laughs> Who the fuck is this dork? Oh, yeah. He's going to show him how to Harlem shake. What's he going to do next? Here's how you do the fucking swag surf. There it goes. Yeah. 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 Dude. What the fuck? They have replicas of my cock? <laughs> they have replicas of my cock in front of this shit? What the heck? That's so annoying. I should be paid for that. Here we go. y'all make some noise. This water bottle is too big. Yeah, Houston, Texas, never been here. Somebody in the front row shot, they shot. And I applaud you for this. But I like men. But listen, white women of the world, I have been clean and sober from white women for a very long time. Y'all gotta relax. Try to make me relapse. No, no, no. Yeah. <sighs> Remember that clip I showed you guys of that guy getting like, you know, you remember that clip I showed you guys of this guy? Do you remember I showed you? Did I show you on this one? When did I show you it? Do you remember I showed you that clip of that guy getting run over? Right? Remember? Right? Um, Good Samaritan killed pickup truck. Do you guys remember that video I showed you guys? Remember this? Remember this story here? I would love it if that black guy in that video for Chris Alia, instead of this guy who passed away, who being a hero, I would love it if they swap roles. I'd love it if they swap roles. I'd love it if that black guy in Chris Alia's video was actually this person. Just as a as a skit, as a bit, as like a little clip. Ha 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 ha. That'd be quite funny, wouldn't it? As like a little bit, right? A little animation, probably. You just swap this guy for the other guy, you know? That would be pretty cool, don't you think? Just as a just as a little skit, nothing serious, nothing crazy. Just as a skit, just as a skit, nothing crazy. I heard about this. Hey, okay, this is gonna go on the blog. Let's never have this happen again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's a blow to my ego. I don't know. It's a blow to my ego. 
Yeah. Well, maybe it's because they know I'm not single. How about yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. No, don't say it like that. All right, you're off the tour. Of course, yeah. Right, but how come when you do it, I feel so, so fucking awkward. Because you don't, you don't know how to do it. So once That's you start it. to learn how to do it, then the comfort level comes in. You trying to do the bachata? I mean, that's a little too involved for me to just try to teach Chris how to do it. Oh, now you saucing. What's that? I mean, you can call it that if you want because you don't really know it, but yeah. I mean, it's a version of it. Yeah. It makes, me, it makes me feel horrible. Built like a Mexican. Thank you so much. That's probably the nicest thing. You got a Mexican body. Probably the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Okay, we're done. We're done. Um, we're done. I'm off. Wow, that was a lot to get through. Um, insane. But yeah, we're going to do a few more of those. I'm going to find some fun ones to check out. We're going to watch them because, yeah, those 12 vlogs are crazy. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, let's continue this, isn't it? Let's continue this another time, all right? Let's continue this another fucking time. Thank you so much for those of you tuning in. Random show, we're out. We're fucking out. Thank you for tuning in. Been a fucking pleasure. It's 7 a.m. here in London. I've got a jet, work time, gym time. You know the good stuff we've got to do. So thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. If you've enjoyed the show, make sure you smash the like button down below, please. Make sure you smash the like button down below. Don't be flipping lame. Give me a like down below, my friends. That would be greatly appreciated. And I'll see the rest of you guys later, innit? I'll see you all later. Thank you for tuning in. It's never a chore. Always a blessing. Never a fucking chore. Always a fucking blessing. Thank you for hanging out, my friends. Thank you for hanging out, my friends. Really, really thank you for hanging out. It's always a fucking pleasure, you know? Um, you know, I fucking love it. I really do fucking love it. So thank you for chilling out with me. Um, yeah, man. Make sure you smash the like button, you know? And I'll give you all, guys, another jingle, another time. But for now, thank you. Peace out. Be safe wherever you may be. Be fucking safe, okay? Be safe wherever you are. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you all guys again. Very, 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 very soon. Okay? Cool. See you later. Bye-bye.